Hello everybody, it's time to drop in again. It's that time of the year, the Freeride World Tour 2019 about to kick off here in Hakuba, Japan. I'm Martin Winkler and next to me, my good friend and co-host, Neil Willeman. Take it away, man. Nice to be back. Thanks for having me. Good to see you again. Good to be sitting here at a World Tour competition. Good to be looking at a beautiful say, face and beautiful sunlight here in the Japanese Alps, here in Hakuba, Japan. The face is looking amazing today. We've had fresh snowfall in the last few days. I can't wait to see what these riders have got for us. This face is actually pretty big. If you can't see the people at the top at the, the start gate by the rock, then it's because they're so small and this face is longer than I thought when I first saw it. It's going to be a huge competition day today. Uh, we're going to tell you a little bit about Hakuba, where we are, what we're doing here, what we're going to expect to see today. Tell you a little bit about this beautiful place you're in right now. Yeah, Hakuba lies in the heart of the Japanese Alps and is well known for being a prime winter sport resort. Being so close to the ocean, it has the privilege to receive a massive amount of snow. The event window is from the 19th to the 26th, but we are very fortunate that today, the first day, we're going to kick things off. They, the riders had a few days of enjoying the local food, mainly sushi, of course, and the famous Japanese pal. Yeah, look at these guys shooting. This is Aiman Avaro enjoying the powder in the trees. It's been good while I've been here, as Japan is famous for. Lots of snowfall. Got Christopher Tudel, defending champion there, airing through the trees as well, and just enjoying the scenery. Well, uh, McFly gets a face test and a taste test of the powder here. It's my fellow commentator. Just loving these Alps. There's huge mountains here. People don't really know that about Japan. It's amazing. Love this place. Good to be back, and especially good to be back with uh, amazing weather. Uh, we got some nice snowfalls, not too much of it. Like last year, we were just buried in snow, as you can see from the images. Which was previously. literally too much. Yes. But uh, snow, what it's all about here in Japan. You heard about the expression chipao before. It was the host here of uh, the 1998 uh, uh, Winter Olympics Nagano, and ever since it changed more to a free ride orientated uh, resort, resulting in free ride world qualifier events and now the free ride world tour. That's right, huge pro progression of free riding in Japan. And looking at this footage of the competitions from the last couple of years, two years ago the first ever free ride competition in Japan, and now there's nine this year. It's it's great to see the potential being realized on these faces, these venues, and the snow quality that you have here for competitions. It's just fantastic. Uh, looking at some of the footage from the last couple of years, Reina Bakarid enjoying the snow here, and Marcus Ida, some of the favorites for today's competition, and Christopher Turdell, of course, defending champion as well. Not too long to go now. We have got a forerunner dropping in in this magical powder pretty soon. Got some forerunners to show us the venue, show us how the snow is looking, have a wee practice for the, the drone flyers and making sure that we can see everything. The judges are ready. We're ready. I bet you're ready. I'm pretty psyched. Beyond ready. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's the whole season beginning. A winter begins here in Japan and it couldn't start off any better. Amazing snow. Weather is accordingly. Like, uh, it's a little dizzy on top, but uh, you know, when it snows a lot, there's a lot of bad weather involved. So we are super happy to have uh, this kind of visibility on the first day of the event window. That's right. Big props to the riders for inspecting during the last couple of days. It's been a little bit cloudy coming in and out. So riders had to spend a lot of time looking at the face from a lot of different angles to make sure they got their lines right and making the most of the sunny day. Uh, other venues, sometimes we have a sunny day for inspection to make sure they've got their line right and then a sunny day for the competition. But in this case, it was kind of foggy days for inspection make sure we get the one sunny day that we have in the start of the weather window for the competition prime time saturday thanks for tuning in i think that it's in the middle of the night in some places in the middle of the <laughs> afternoon and yeah. others so appreciate having you here and we've got a forerunner coming up for you soon yeah you just saw the first images from the start uh it's pretty packed up there the riders are really eager to see the forerunner to, s to check out the snow you have to imagine the the riders have been waking up super early to hike all the way to the, pa uh, to, the, to the start from the very bottom. You can see the last rider making its way up. And uh, the forerunner, number one, is on its way. Let's have a look what the snow conditions are like. Looks pretty good to me so far. Rippable comp snow there. Sometimes if it's too deep and too light, then you get a lot of slough going, a little bit of mini avalanches even, and this looks good. This is a, the kind of consistency and deepness that people can ski fast in, land big cliffs in, just enjoy shredding like this 4 is doing right now. 
looking textbook, I must say. We had a lot of wind the past couple of days, even last night when we uh, in the hotel in the valley, it was uh, banging the, the windows against each other. Some had a hard night sleeping well, but uh, uh, wind stopped just perfect timing this morning. And you can see the quality of snow, it gets even better further down below. That's right, this forerunner loving it here. I'm not sure which one it is. It might be one of the guides. The guides are up super early, I think 3 a.m. to tour to the top of the face long before the resort opens to make sure the face is secure, see if any wind slab had developed to create avalanche danger. It seems that if any has, they've released those pockets through ski cutting. So big thanks to the guides for setting it up. This forerunner is enjoying it and making the most of it right now. One of the forerunners is the wife, I believe, or partner of uh, Simon Favre, one of the judges. So if that's her, then it's Gigi and hello, Gigi. Uh, Good to see you enjoying the snow, but I don't think it is. <laughs> no, no. Uh, she definitely is a snowboard legend of Switzerland. So uh, definitely not. Another snowboard legend called Gigi. Yeah, exactly. But uh, her name is uh, based on Geraldine. Mm -hmm. So you can see here that it's quite bushy at the bottom. So this is beyond the end of the judging line. So just so you guys know that the venue obviously runs from the top where the riders are starting to the bottom where the riders are finishing. But at this point where they're pushing through the bushes, it's not going to be counted. It's not part of the judged criteria, not part of the judged run. We're showing you where the riders have to go to get from that judging finish line to the corral finish line, the finish area where the, the fans will be, the stand will be, the uh, wall where they stand in front of where we're waiting for their scores will be. So they're making their way over uh, at the moment to that area, but just to clarify, this is not part of the judged run. Still looks pretty fun now. Oh, yeah. Worth getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning for such a run. Yeah, thanks again to the guides for doing that. It's not the first day they've done it either. I think they've been doing it at least two days, maybe three or more in a row now. So huge props to those guys for securing this venue so we can have this show today because I'm pretty excited about it. And you have to know that this run is accessible from the resort. Uh, it was just not possible this morning for the riders to take the gondola because of too much wind still in the morning when we woke up. Uh, so we had to take the decision to uh, let the, the, all the riders hike up. So we are on time for you to present the first stop of the tour. That's right. Big ups to the riders who are getting up early as well. And the hotel that we're staying at for putting <laughs> yeah. on an early breakfast because they've been working a lot to, to look after all of us. So, so what are we going to do now? We are going to check out what the we're looking for. We're going to look at the competitive free riding. The contest is riding. on pretty mm -hmm. soon. And uh, what a contest, free ride contest of a free sport like free riding is all about. That's what we're going to see next. What is competitive free riding? Well, after years of having fun, people began to wonder who was best. And so it began. A crew of skiers held a competition in Alaska. Next was Switzerland with the extreme verbia. Gradually, these contests spread across the world and joined together as a single tour. And so it went global. The big show. But in the end, it comes down to one rider atop a mountain. And while safety equipment is abundant, the rules remain remarkably simple. There's a start on a peak and a finish at the bottom. There are no gates, no piste, no clock, and there's no practice run. Riders rely on a visual inspection and their imagination to create a line. Runs are judged using five subjective criteria. Which means any approach or style has the potential to win. For riders, the pressure is immense and the margin between success and failure narrow. Over the years, competition has driven the sport to new heights, and now the only certainty is progression. This is competitive free riding. This is competitive free riding. This is the Free Ride World Tour. 10 years last year, 11th year this year. Pretty excited to be kicking it off here with a beautiful day. 
And uh, last year we tried to have a competition here as well. Got a little bit shut down by the weather. Too much mm -hmm. snow, as we we're saying before. Year before that, we had a four-star competition here. And uh, last year when we couldn't manage to run it here in Hakuba, we restaged the competition in Kicking Horse in Canada. So we saw some amazing action there. The, the riders representing Japan and the Japal that they'd just been enjoying the week before uh, was pretty cool to see. And we're going to look at those top five moments. Here we have the top five actions of that day in uh, Kicking Horse. Kicking off with uh, Rachel Croft sending it fast through that shoot. Probably the fastest, not only girl, but all competitors compared down the mountain. Barely holding on at one point, but what a show she put on. Mind-blowing stuff. Jan Ralsis coming in number four for our top five favorite moments of last year. In, uh, Hakub restaged in Kicking Horse, sending that huge clip into the sniper landing, landing exactly between the cliffs and rocks. So that's exactly what the, ri the riders are doing when they are scoping their lines, making sure the takeoff is there, the landing for that backflip. Everything is going on there in the riders' mind. They're so focused in that minute of uh, laying down the prepared for a day. A great venue for the rookies. Here we see Griffin Mahler sending it with a beautiful 360 into that shoot, already tracked out. But that's what the judges want to see, committed riding and perfect stomps. That's right, Logan Pahoda, the local of Canada, taking down the stop last year with a win and a podium in the two-stop station King Norse. This being the Hakuba one, where Logan sent this huge line also into a sniper landing. Lots of sniper landings at that competition. Look how it looked from him. Blow Mind-blowing stuff there. Marcus Eder on the first <laughs> on this action list, of course, with a creative line at the top and finishing things off with a beautiful 360. Stand the grab, stomped. So smooth. What a start so of the season smooth. for him. Let's see what he can uh, show us today. I'm looking forward especially to his run because uh, I think it fits perfectly his riding style. Yeah, that's right. He's been here for a couple of weeks, I think, filming in Japan already with Fabio mm. Studio. <laughs> Studio. Studio. <laughs> mm, one of the other the World Tour riders uh, running around a little German-speaking crew, although Marcus Ida is representing Italy. He is a German-speaking Italian. So we've got another forerunner coming to show you what the course is like on the other side. Uh, the snow looked pretty good on the lookers left, riders right. We can see the riders hiking up at the moment. And hopefully this forerunner is going to go a little bit further. Riders left, lookers right to show us how the snow is. We've got a snowboarder this time. Is Gigi? Uh, yeah, should be Geraldine. Wife of uh, one of the local judges, Simon. She has been competing in the past just as well as Simon on the qualifiers. But the two made their dream come true. They fell in love with Japan, and a couple of years ago, they uh, yeah made their dream come true and uh, bought a place, a spot here. And uh, if you want to know more about it, go on to the interweb and check out the Kodama Lodge. It's a beautiful place. Ski in, ski out, just outside here of Hakuba. And uh, she knows a thing or two about riding Japanese powder. That's right. They are based in Cortina here in the Hakuba Valley. There's multiple resorts and they're all pretty fun. So I recommend checking out all of them. Are we sure that this is Gigi? I think we have three forerunners today. So quite an aggressively wide stance. It might be a guy. <laughs> I have no idea about exactly her style. But uh, we don't know the names in of the forerunners. But we know that Gigi is part of the three forerunners. And uh, we just got the confirmation. It is Geraldine. Wow, I'm impressed with the riding. It. Yeah, it's super solid and aggressive. Really ripping that snow, showing us that it looks good on the looker's right side as well. So this is really promising for the whole venue to be covered in a not incredibly deep, but just deep enough layer of fine powder, which is nice to land on. If you have really deep snow and you land in someone else's bomb hole, it's yep. not what you want. And also happy to see that it's not as wind affected as I was afraid it to be. <laughs> and this is probably a sight we're going to see a little more <laughs> coming over yeah, the next couple cut away of from hours. That part. <laughs> yeah, because it's just that flat at the very bottom. And as uh, Neil already mentioned correctly, that uh, the finishing, not the finishing, but the uh, judging judges line, finishing. judges finishing line is just above. So uh, they can uh, take off their snowboard, which is unusual for a free cont contest to make their way through the bushy section into uh, the finishing corral. That's right. So here is the venue, the big triangle. You've looked at this one before, haven't you, last year? Yeah, it was impressive. Uh, looking from the image, it's, it may fool you because it's 440 meters of vert 
and it has a ton of options. It doesn't look as long from here, from this perspective, but uh, we had the chance to inspect it on site when it was just hard packed last year before a big storm coming in. And all the riders were very surprised, including me, how many features and how long this venue is. And uh, yeah, if we have uh, the long lens uh, later on, you can see the little dots of people hiking up. Uh, you can see then the, the reference. Facing north, as I said, it's accessible from the ski area, from the ski resort. And uh, uh, there is left and right, there is just terrain like that. Yeah, and don't uh, forget 46 degrees. That's pretty steep. Like 440 meters, 46 degrees, it's pretty sustained. Like I think that if you can keep your speed up and flow between features, you know, connect some creative uh, maybe trick hits, if you will, then I think it'd be really, really interesting to watch because there's so many talented riders here with quite a lot of different styles, and I'm really excited to see what people do to make the most of this venue. Those features are bigger than I thought they were. That cliff at the top where the, the starting is, the, the triangle cliff up the top there, I thought that was like a potential hittable feature and seeing riders <laughs> standing next to it today, it's ginormous. So yeah. I think a lot of the features there I thought were like poppy playful, well, you'll probably trick that might be actually massive sins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm getting pretty excited. We, ha we have one more forerunner coming up. Got a third forerunner. Uh, I guess they'll go probably in the middle of the face. Uh, I'm not sure if you could see from the forerunners that have written already in the picture of the face that it's quite separated into separate gullies, separate funnels. Mm -hmm. So uh, each rider will not be constrained to each of those, but have to make a very conscious choice to, to move between them if they want to access other features. It's a little bit of a traverse, and to keep your speed up might be a bit of a challenge. So hopefully we see this third fauna running going down the middle to kind of highlight the fact that it's different couloirs, almost fluted spines, if you will. Yeah, and uh, if you're an experienced Fairwood World Tour uh, viewer and maybe rider yourself, you might think there are not many features to hit in there. Um, it all seems to be just a nice pow, but I can tell you that we're going to see a lot of airtime today because uh, those uh, spines that you can see down, uh, running all the way down, are perfect transition spots. Um, not sure yet which parts are the best to hit. That's uh, what we're going to find out soon, but be sure we're going to see a ton of action and airtime today. Yeah, that's right. I'm really excited for seeing creative writers to find out what spots I've been scoping the last couple of days. It's been a little bit hard to scope, as I was saying, uh, with the binoculars from the other side of the valley and variable light. So we've got another forerunner coming in now. But just to finish what I was saying, I'm excited for people like Drew Tabke, the transferinator, as I call him, to <laughs> find out where he can air from. And so third forerunner on course, another snowboarder. And the riders watching them from the boot pack. Big ups to the riders for hiking from the bottom of the valley for this one. As we're saying, it's steep and it's quite long, so good warm-up for the riders coming into the top of the venue today, watching the forerunner and John slashing down the power. Similar area to where the first run forerunner event looks a little bit more wind-affected here, McFly. You're right. So it's uh, one of the ridges on the top. You can see the old tracks in there. It's a good indicator for the... For the riders standing on top, I hope they have some eyes on it that they can actually see the forerunner going down. It gives them a good, good hint because they haven't been uh, riding at all in this kind of uh, terrain the last couple of days when we had the big storm moving through. And uh, as we know, it's all about visual inspection. It's one chance only per stop for each rider. You have to nail it. Yeah, a lot of time goes into this visual inspection. You know, they're looking from as many angles as they can for as long as they can, taking photos, zooming in, looking on a computer later, talking to others about it. There's a lot that goes into the preparation for these runs, as I'm sure you can imagine. This four are enjoying a similar line to the first four runner, I believe, but a little bit more in the center of the face. You can see the into one of the, the cool wires now, it'll be a little bit more difficult to get left or right into other features, but starting to come towards the bottom now, judging line about there, past it about 10, 20 meters ago and now into the trees where the riders will be not penalized at all for slowing down, making sure that they don't hit a tree, don't uh, get caught up on the snow in there. Just enjoy coming down to the finishing line, which might take a couple of minutes. Yep, and uh, these were some cruisy lines. The judges will have a hard time to uh, defer and to rank the others because we're going to have some a ton of action represented by this, all the categories. And how this all comes together to a score we're going to show you now. This is the judging criteria, what the judges want to see or don't want to see. Got 
five different categories coming up for you. So we have an experienced judges panel, all former riders, and uh, they are judging on five main categories. First one up is line. Here the judges are considering the difficulty and creativity of the line. It's always a good sign if you see no other tracks, original line and well fit caught through one is a good. Uh -huh. That's right. Fluidity is another important category. It doesn't mean that you have to be super fast everywhere, but fast compared to the terrain you're riding. Taking enough care to stay safe, but sending it as well. Control, a big one. This is not only about the crashes, but the judges also consider if the rider is in control all the time. Don't scare the judges. Air and style is uh, one of the most impressive ones. It's kind of the favorite, I suppose. The tricks, the amplitude. Look at this huge backflip from Drew Tabke and Andorra last year. This is uh, the kind of thing that audiences generally want to see and of course is well rewarded in the judging as well. But if you're just doing this without having done well in the other categories as well, you can't get a good overall score. And that's what it's all about. Of course, these are the categories, but it's about an overall score, one score only. And uh, it's all about rankings here. Don't uh, start comparing the scores, individual scores, to other events. It's all about ranking in one individual event. That's right. Other events, other categories, not relevant for today. It's a relevant score compared to the other riders in your category on this day. Uh, a 90 in this, uh, this run at this resort today might not be a 90 at a different resort on another day. The judges just want to give themselves enough room to fit other riders in to make sure everyone has the, the right ranking at the end of the day. And who are those judges that we are going to be uh, judged by today? It's uh, five impressive judges with a very impressive pedigree, a bio, if you will, of uh, history, mainly riding on the World Tour, riding on the qualifiers, having judged for 10 or 15 years at the Olympics. All sorts of uh, impressive achievements by the judges as well as the riders. Uh, who's, who's, your, who's your favorite judge, if I can ask that, McFly? Poo, favorite judge? Um, I would say Lolo. He's probably the most experienced judge uh, on the panel. And uh, yeah, especially his riding style, his, uh, his attitude towards the mountain is very appreciated by the riders. He's also uh, a t technical supervisor by now. And uh, so he's very yeah, uh, knowledgeable in his field. So Lola Best, head judge of the snowboard category, I believe? Could be, but most probably. Or okay. maybe Dion. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. Um, Dion and I. Uh, showed the before. best run, yeah. Yeah. He's a very solid rider. We're going to see that in a minute. And uh, Blake Ham is getting ready in the start gate. He is bib number one, followed by his new friend, Gigi Roof. Yeah, Blake getting a chair at the bib draw for uh, pulling bib number one. Everyone's uh, excited for someone else to do that little rider four run. You've seen the the guides and the the friends and the the locals doing four runs before that, but the first rider that you see on course kind of changes the game a little bit. You know, someone hundred percent going for it. Someone that spent uh, two or three days scoping where they're gonna where they're gonna ski or snowboard. They've looked at photos. They've done all the mental preparation. They're in the zone in the start gate, and when you release them, they just send it. We just got the info that unfortunately we have not been live with you in your home office or in bed probably in Europe. It's uh, one o'clock in the morning. Uh, good morning to everyone there. Um, but unfortunately we had a little cut from the satellite transmission. Uh, so we're back on live now. We should be back with action very, very soon. That's right, and we've got our first rider coming up in 1 minute and 30 seconds. So you have not missed any riders, although the live stream may have been down for a minute or two, then the most important thing is still to come. It's Blake Ham, the first rider on course, coming up in about a minute. And that's a drone shot. Big ups to the drone crew for getting this set up. There has been so much work going into that the last few days. Early hiking, in the dark, satellite carrying, skidoo riding. There's, I can't tell you how much work goes into the behind the scenes of the World Tour. There's at least one staff member for every rider that you're going to see today. And the drone crew have put a lot of work in to get high quality images to you from the air via a satellite. It's uh, amazing stuff and hopefully they can capture some images of Blake Ham and the rest of the riders coming down this big triangle venue we have for you, have for you in Hakuba here today, dropping in 30 seconds. God, <laughs> I'm excited, man. It's so amazing to see some sun on this venue. So well deserved after 
a long struggle last year. We were spending, not that it's a struggle to ride POW, but definitely we had the two event tries, like uh, we had already, everything was on go to make it happen, and then wind and weather just didn't acco play accordingly, and now it's on in textbook conditions. It's just about to happen. We've got Blake Ham from the USA oh, dropping in in 10 seconds. Pretty excited to see the first rider on this course. I'm sure the other riders are as well. I think you can see quite a lot of the, the venue from the top. Yeah, it doesn't roll over too much. There is a, a rollover to the Lucas right side where it gets really, really steep. I'm wondering who's going to send it into that really sketchy and uh, technical area. Blake Ham opening things up. He's the guinea pig of the event and the season. Blake Ham on course. What do you got for us, buddy? Beautiful drone shot here, moving across, showing the Japanese Alps in the background, and Blake Ham shrouping some nice snow. Just as you get off the ridge, it seems to get a little bit better, a little bit less wind effect, I assume. Yeah, as we mentioned before, we had a great snow event just uh, before this contest window, but unfortunately coming with a lot of wind. Lining up his first feature with a huge backflip. Over-rotating a little bit, riding out. Out nice of powder the dust. cloud. Yes. <laughs> Hard to tell what damage did it do. And backing it up with a 360. First two hits of Hakuba, first two tricks. This is amazing stuff. Blake Ham, keep it up. You are ripping hard. Oh, he has to get himself together again because I'm uh, pretty sure he he is psyched from that huge backflip. Not sure he wanted to send it that hard because he nearly over-rotated, or he, maybe he did. It was hard to tell from the dust, from the powder well, he, he threw up. He put up a powder cloud and threw, away, <laughs> threw up a powder cloud and rode away quickly. So whatever happened, it did well to make it look smooth and styly. So a backflip and a three from Blake Ham in the first round of the day. Coming down past the judging finish line now, so I believe that his score will be calculated from everything that happened above this, not this part, thanks to the forerunners for putting on this track for him to make his way quickly to the finish line. Uh, by the time he arrives at the finish line in the finished corral, I believe that we will have a score for him already, and it might even be announced. But hands up from Blake Ham and to Blake Ham. First run of the day, super sick. If that's a sign of things to come, I'm pretty excited. Oh, yeah, I think that is a little sign of what we can expect. And you can see it's completely being blown off by the wind, all the, the takeoffs on those ridges, and he's sending it deep. So it controlled ah. down on the judging criteria. I believe that they're going to call that a crash for that uh, backflip that could have been over-rotated. Uh, even put it in a 360 after that with a nice grab. His control and technique have been put low. Uh, I'm not sure if the technique is related to the, the landing of that air or maybe his riding at the bottom. Uh, looked a little bit more hesitant down the bottom. Maybe it's a little bit more difficult to find his way than he expected or he was ex expecting to see another feature that looked different from the top than it did from the bottom. So uh, score coming in for Blake Ham, opening things up in a really amazing way. Super fun to watch, 54.67. So over average, uh, they're obviously rewarding him for those tricks and airs, although probably taking off a few points for the landing of that backflip, I assume, is why his score is not higher. Sitting first for now after one rider, Blake Ham, opening things up in a pretty impressive way. Big ups to you. Thank you, Blake Ham, for that performance. Looking forward to seeing more rides for, from you this year. Great start, but we know the rider up to come from Austria, he's going to set the bar for everyone after he has been riding Japanese power for years, and he has been proving it in video parts year after year. The most creative rider and probably a role model for riders here on the competition. So fast Iggy through that top Ruth. section. Yes, cruising it. Gigi lining up his first top feature, stomping it clean. Not quite as big as Blake, and not with the trick, but putting that landing down on four points square. So I think you'll probably get at least as many points for that air as Blake Ham did for that backflip, uh, because his landing was so clean. And sending another huge one. Oh, oh sending it deep! <laughs> wow. Stomping it and riding straight into another feature. Here comes a beautiful 360. Everything clean so far. So and smooth. styly. 
Wow, this is an amazing run from Gigi Roof here so far. Four hits, one trick, everything stomped. And lining up something else as well, coming down to the lookers right at the bottom. Slashing that power. Enjoying wow. Enjoying it. You have to know, he has been in the snowboard game for so many years, but still he gets the goosebumps, he gets the butterflies in his stomach before dropping into a Freeride World Tour competition. He really wants to represent well. First Pretty sure he wanted stomp. to do a grab in there. That's yeah. what he usually does. Unusual flail from Gigi, but stomping both those first two hits. And sending oh. it deep. Air and style high. So this will be a good score, I think. Putting four features together, stomping all of the landings, putting in that 360. The only thing I'd say he probably would have been disappointed with is a lack of grabs. Yeah. Known for good grabs, so uh, maybe a little bit of... Uh, uh, snow that he wasn't expecting. You know, if takeoffs are popping you differently, you can't grab. But Gigi Roof, 87.67. Would have been in the 90s setting, with grabs. But setting the bar, you're right. Uh, imagine if he would have uh, put kind of the style he's known for into his run, he would have uh, gone through the roof with his score. That was super sick. 87.67 from Gigi Roof. And like you said, setting the bar. Got the next rider coming up soon. Ludovic Giordia. Requalifying after being on the Freeride World Tour from 2012 to 2015, not requalifying that year. So 16 and 17 uh, and 18 back on the qualifiers, three years back on the Freeride World qualifiers, and now he has requalified the the re rookie, the super rookie, the ultra rookie, Ludo Giodia, dropping in on course in a matter of seconds. And Ludo heading out to the lookers left, riders right, more straight into the sun where we had the force, first forerunner riding. Just heading past the guides there, some of the safety and medical team and lining up a first hit. Oh. Worth the backflip as well and I, stomping it. I think it was a front flip. What, what? Like a, a little bit of reflecting in our, on our screen. Jan. You probably at home would have seen it better. <laughs> I'd say it was a, a stomped flip yes. in any case, which is a pretty amazing thing to start your re-career with back on the World Tour. And look at the quality of the snow. That's <laughs> so exciting. Oh, oh no. no. Jinxed him on the quality of the snow. Mm, another, another flip there. Another flip straight back to his feet, but unfortunately not the kind that judges <laughs> like. So he goes for another <laughs> one. Three flips so far in one run. Two intentional and stomped. One unintentional and stomped, but going down again, unfortunately. You're really forcing it now. Body checking that wall, but putting in a big air with a smooth grab. Wow. Unfortunate. What an action-loaded run from Ludo. <laughs> Being back on oh, tour after missing out good? for a couple of years, yeah, very experienced Freeride World Tour and Freeride World Qualifier rider. Really. Yeah, you're right. It was a front flip at the top and stomps it too. Not very often you see a front flip from a snowboarder, not a for, nor for a skier in free riding. This is a harder trick, actually way harder than the back flip. Definitely less common. But yeah, getting a little bit hung up in that landing there, it might be a little bit more punchy snow, wind effect or something. Uh, so a front punch, and then uh, I'm not even sure if that was a backflip. That one's more of a what do you call it? A Lincoln loop, a barrel <laughs> roll on a snowboard. That was that was cool. I like that. Different tricks, different Please flips. excuse us, all snowboarders out there. We are both skiers. We try our best. You know the names maybe better than we do. But control down for Ludo, unfortunately. Yeah. Going down twice in that run. Uh, looking really solid. Apart from that, though, like and promising riding. Motivated. Mm. All three of the first riders have thrown tricks here today. Ludo, not the only one, but throwing multiple tricks. 32.33 points for him today due to two crashes. Getting hung up with a front punch and body checking a probably unexpected side hit landing or side hill landing. So uh, unfortunate for Leo in his first run back. But I think it's also a good sign the momentum is set. We see that if you don't have a trick in your line, it's going to be really tough to make the top podium today especially with some heavy hitters still to come, just like Travis Rice still up in the podium. But before that, we have Jonathan Penfield, also known for some tricks. He has a few in the bag. Follow him on Instagram. He does them anywhere, everywhere. And Jonathan Penfield dropping on the lookers left, riders right of the course, just riding past some guys uh, heading down with a rescue bin for injured riders. So hopefully he won't say that again. Hopefully we won't <laughs> see that again uh, at all today uh, or anyone. 
But uh, Jonathan lining up the same first hit as Blake, I believe. Taking it off the side with a grab, stomping it clean. Yeah, Jonathan more of a pure free ride, big mountain rider, I believe. Like you said, got tricks in his bag. There you go, there's one of them. 360, little bit of a washout on the landing, but still really smooth. Putting in a grab off that one too. It's definitely a styly rider as well as a, a backcountry big mountain shredder charger. And he, he surprised us right from the get-go when he came on tour. I remember his run in Chamonix where he st uh, started um, on, a, on a knife cliff uh, with, uh, I think it was even a seven. He wanted to do a five, but had to then uh, go all the way to the seven. Okay, maybe I'll take it back then. He's a style rider as well. Yeah. Another 360 in there as well, just a little bit earlier in the line. And popping around off these fun wee terrain nuggets at the bottom. I think it's going to be a solid run from Jonathan. Good way to start the season. Definitely solid run. Wants to have a score in the bag, it seems like, but definitely not as pushing as we've seen previous riders. Of course, pushing uh, to get a good score also means higher risk of a crash, just as we've seen like Ludo done before. That's right, so front side 360 there. Even though we didn't see any crash, you can see fluidity and air and style all about in the red category. This uh, gives you a little indicator of what the judges are scoring on. Doesn't reflect 100% the score, but it gives you a little indicator. And here we have 65.33 for Jonathan Penfield. So the reason I think that that is above Blake and below Gigi is because he uh, didn't have any control issues like Blake did, although Blake went bigger on that first hit, you know, with the trick as well. Uh, Jonathan stomped it clean. Uh, however, Gigi was really charging. He was going really fast and, and really smooth as well. So Jonathan a little bit slower, but, you know, still could uh, get a good result here today. Potential podium. Next one up in the start, his fellow American, Christopher Galvin. He is no stranger to the Freeride World Tour. He dropped off for, for one season and rejoined the Wolf Pack. He is back. Christopher Galvin. That's right, Christopher Galvin on course in 10 seconds. He came to New Zealand to do some qualifiers as well. I watched him in a four-star down in New Zealand. And uh, New Zealand four-stars are really high level. They uh, have a lot of local sending cliffs that they know. And, and this guy, Christopher Galvin, turned up and sent the same cliffs without having hit them before like most of the locals have, I think. And, and took a second in the four-star there. And that was one of the results that put him back on the world tour. It's great to have him back. Really good friend and riding buddy of uh, the three-time world champ, Sammy Lipke. They're hanging out together, probably sharing some secrets of line choice. Very smooth, very stylish rider so out of tr uh, the Tahoe region. That's right, Tahoe representing with multiple riders on the on the tour this year and many years. So going a little bit further, look is right, right is left on the course. He was in Gigi Roof's tracks or following Gigi Roof's tracks before, but now going out to a different zone, that steeper zone that rolls over a bit more, as you were saying before. Yeah, hold on. It's a little mellow at the top, but... Just a second, and it gonna, it's going to roll into a very gnarly zone. As long as he keeps on the skier's left side of the venue. Yeah, we haven't seen see any tricks. Get in, yeah. Haven't seen any drops so far. Not the best decision on a scoring point of view. Definitely found some beautiful turns to lay down. First air into the steep section, but unfortunately coming unstuck off the second air. Got bucked off on that second ear, as you just said. Unfortunate. Really wanted to uh, pump up his score in that steep section, but didn't play off as he planned. Yeah, kind of reminded me a little bit of Gigi coming off those uh, those lips and not being able to grab. I think there might be a little bit of unexpected snow layer in the takeoffs, which could explain the reason why the rider's been looking a little bit wild in the air sometimes. You know, these are really, really good, super talented riders, and when they get an unexpected takeoff like that, it's a... Uh, not for no reason there's something going on in there so hopefully those takeoffs get a little bit more predictable as other riders have uh, skied them before or snowboarded them before and the people coming next can see how they are but uh, unlucky for Christopher Gelvin today not able to stick all his hits and that control bar will be down in the Joker criteria resulting in the lowest score I think. Here we have the criterias obviously if you are not new to the third world tour you know what the score is going to be like pretty low because of the crash he didn't have the chance to, uh, or he didn't manage to, to bump up his score high enough to still get away with an with average score. 
which it would happen if you have an amazing run and, and have an issue. Like Blake Ham. <laughs> Just like Blake Ham, you're right. But something interesting I thought for that um, that judging criteria was the line choice was reasonably high. The line choice was rewarded for going out to the lookers right. And maybe it's a little bit hard to see on your screen at home, but that the part of the venue that Christopher Gelvin just went out to on the lookers right is really steep. So all the con control was down for that little crash. Uh, was a good line. So uh, 29.67 coming in fifth, uh, unfortunately last at the moment with the crash. And uh, we've still got Kiki Roof sitting in the hot seat for now. Who we got next? Big anticipation for the next rider. His at first ever freeride world tour run, Victor Delarue. Not only brother of three-time world tour champion, Xavier Delarue, pretty sure he's going to watch at home middle of the night in Europe. Here he comes, Victor Delarue. Victor Delarue with the movie Frozen Mind last year, starting off with the big ear straight out of the start gate. What happened there? A lot of dust in the, in the air. Maybe Couldn't a little bit of a control clearly. issue, unfortunately, for Victor. Uh, similar to Blake Ham throwing up a, a powder cloud that had uh, hit exactly what happened. It might have been good, it might have been bad. So backing it up with a nice 360 as well. Uh, you could see the landing was a little harder than he expected. As we mentioned, there was a lot of wind yeah. on the face, continuing with a beautiful 360. Yeah, nice backside 360 from Victor. Got the drone following down here. It's a drone shot of a drone shot, just like a Travis Rice movie. You have to know they're all natural hits, nothing shaped, nothing prepared, all visual inspection only. One chance only to ride this face for all the riders. And Victor putting the landing gear down on that one, really stomping that hard. I think it was a little bit flatter or maybe harder than he expected, but yeah, really putting feet to, to the floor. Still enjoying that Japanese power. What a talented rider. Check out his latest movie. You're going to be blown away. Yeah, Not only running. about his freestyle segment or skills, he has the full package. Big mountain, ice axes out, and then another trick, another double cork. It's insane, the combination of skills he has. That's right. So this big ear off the top, can we see what happens in the landing there? Looks like he might have had a bit of a control issue. The judges only judge what they see, so they might not be able to take him down on the control, but they do. Uh, has a control issue here as well, so those two things combined might be the reason for that. Technique also down, uh, similar to Blake Ham overall on the, the judging criteria for having a, a shredding run with big ears and tricks, but uh, coming a little bit unstuck on some of the landings. Not full tumbles though. Yeah, it's a... Uh even though the snow is amazing to ride, you can see it is variable, especially on the takeoffs, and it's surprising you. You have, as, as we said, one chance only, and that's why it's reflecting in 35.67. That's right. Maybe the judges can see a little bit more of the, the landing of that first year than we could on the screen uh, with the binoculars and, and uh, replays that they have. Uh, so I'm sure that they've made the right decision there, uh, unfortunately for Victor fourth at the moment. The rookie from last season impressed me with his solid and consistent riding. No, not rookie from last no, year, from two years ago. Yeah. Sorry, I was mistaken. The Such a happy camper. I love his attitude. Davy Beard from USA. That's right, from Alaska. Heading on down here to Japan. Just popping over the ditch. Getting riding fast. Into the open field, enjoying some first big slash turns side oh, hit such beautiful a sick grab. nice method from Davy Beard really tweaking it out and then a mute I believe on the next hit so no tricks yet but really stylish grabs so uh, you know when you see people like Gigi Roth not grabbing and Davy Beard comes along and grabs it's, it's pretty impressive stuff you know as maybe the takeoffs have been a bit more smoothed out by other riders before him but I'm not sure if anyone had hit those two hits so definitely no one's hit that one Nice backside 360 tail grab and just looking super smooth down here. It's just cruising. Always a good sign if you don't have any tracks in front of you means originality. You found that sunspot right in the middle of the face. Yeah, another mute grab. Gets his board super sideways on his grabs. Really tweaks them out. It's super nice to watch. Now getting into the way steeper part at the bottom. And look his right side, ski his left side. Yeah, just enjoying that pow, the Japow that it's famous for. As you can see, it changes a little bit from yeah. the top to the bottom. Sorry, I was mistaken. He's more in the in the central part of the venue. He 
missed out on the very steep part. He's already in the bushy section, the trees where the judges stop judging. So David Beard, first there, into the open field, keeping his speed up, enjoying the slash turns. Yeah, the biggest chunk of his score will definitely come from the top part. Super nice method. Loving his casual style, and especially this hit here in perfect power. Just float in that back three with the tail grab. Really nice to see. Hard to scope that kind of stuff from the other side of the valley in flattish light. So well done from Davey Beard. We've got the score coming in. 73.33 sitting in second place just behind Gigi Roof right now. All right, we are pretty far down already. Our snowboard stacked or legends stacked snowboard list. And uh, Gigi Roof still in no the hot seat for now. No but who stranger we got next? to come. Yes, he knows that he... It is a hot seat, especially when you have Travis Rice coming after you. Travis, Travis Ri Rice, four-star winner two years ago. No event last year, so previous Japan big comp winner with a big three and a big seven. Got a little bit of, of internet tomfoolery for how excited I was about his run, but I've never been one to ration the passion. I'm not about to start now, and neither is Travis. Just if you are the one or two people in the world that don't know his name, just go and look it up. The fourth phase or the art of flight. And that's what we're going to see. A lot of here. speed coming the through art here. art of flight with a seven. Yeah. Beautifully stomped. And another grab. Already ripping down the space. He's halfway down and it's been no time with the seven already. Took so much speed into that hit. Are we surprised? No. Just excited. Cruising into the lower section, already knowing that he has a big part of his solid score done. Now, he's not backing off at all. Here we got the spe steep section where other people had oh, some problems nice. with. Sticking it clean, still having a little bit of issue going for the back. Yeah, he is making it! What a run. Oh my god. That was amazing. He ticked all the boxes to not only excite us, but definitely the judges. And this score will be going through the roof. Speed, style, amplitude, a seven and a backflip. Got into that steeper section on the lookers right as well. And like that wasn't an easy section as well. You see he was fighting that, but he fought and he won. Christopher Galvin going down in a similar section with the, the slightly unpredictable takeoffs it seemed, but Travis putting it straight to his feet. Here the highlight definitely of his run, the seven, natural hit. Hit. As we mentioned, we're going to see a lot of transfers, and he is, besides Drew Tapke on the ski side, the master of transitions. All those transfers. lines into the green. I think it's going to be a huge score. I would not be surprised if this is a winning score. Putting in grabs as well as tricks. Score coming up for you. And here where I mentioned drive. the little issue was actually nothing at all. We're going to see a Travis Rice oh, Gigi Roof podium. What a beast. Yes, we are. My goodness. <laughs> Travis Rice, 95 points. Very deserved. Judges push the score to 95. Of course, potentially still another five points to the maximum of 100 available. That's but right. We've got three hard-hidden riders yet to come. No, only two. Thomas Feuerstein is not starting. So uh, out of... Travis and Travis is a guaranteed podium now, even if Sammy and Kaito both uh, top his score and somehow push Gigi off the podium. It has been a hard hitting snowboard field so far, and we've got the defending world champ to come, Sammy Lubke, on course. Not a surprise that he's three time world tour champion. And if there is someone who could challenge the 95 top score from Travis Rice, just previously seen, it is him. Going big over that lip. Whoa, huge. That's so blind as well. Sammy coming into another hit, also transferring. Left to right hits across these ridges in the middle of the venue is such a good way to go. Great to see these talented athletes making the most of it. And Sammy spinning a three off that one. Making the most of the venue. Just looks so solid in the air. What was happening here? Should have stayed in the air, mate. Yeah. Can't crash in the air. What happened, Sammy? This never happens to you. Puts in another 360, though. God, he must be bummed. Yeah, that sucks. 
all the perfect snow and the terrain. He loves to ride, and then on a just casual frontside turn, his nose digs in. No obvious reason why. Must have hit a cookie or a variable snow, as you said. Maybe already focusing on the next, on the next feature. This is a cool one, though. Tripling down through the trees. Oh, and got stuck in the wind clip at the bottom. Yeah, looks like a bit of a uphill landing there. Yeah. But Sammy, super creative run. I think there must be some variable snow on those ridges because uh, Sammy Lipke does not go down easily. Throws his hands up, acknowledges it wasn't his day, but don't worry, mate, you'll be back. But he super knows rider. some damage and big damage has already been done by doing the cartwheel at the mid, in the midsection of the venue. Here, opening it up his run with this transfer. Tweaking out method. Frontside three. Do we have a replay of him going down? No. Just looks so solid in the air. I totally jinxed it by saying that. But as you said, he was not in the air. It was a, just a casual frontside turn. Yeah, must have been something and under the snow there. Frontside three, backside three, triple. I mean, it was a pretty sweet line, but... That's uh, how it can go from from doing a top, top line. It can throw you off in a second. Well, that's the thing. It's the first competition of the season. And if you want to win, like Travis Rice might do today, here he is sitting in the hot seat, then uh, you need to put it on the line. You need to be throwing tricks and going fast and jumping big. And if you don't do that, then, you know, you might not get a good result at this competition. And then maybe you can't uh, win the tour overall because you need to be getting all the good results. <laughs> and Gigi is leaving his snowboard <laughs> in the hot seat. Shot. Travis pointing it out, giving each other a hug. The bros. He doesn't mind. He's stoked. He's just had a good day. Riding powder in the sun in Japan. <laughs> you know what? It might be a little bit of a revenge time because uh, Gigi, uh, he was uh, stealing away the, the win at his own event at the Supernatural and Ultranatural. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but good to see them. But they're very good friends. Together, so uh, friend. great riding buddies. A lot of respect between each other. That's right. It's great to see the camaraderie and the respect between the riders at all of these events. There's a lot of encouragement, people cheering for each other as they start, helping each other scope their lines, getting stoked for each other, consoling each other. You know, these guys really look out for each other. It's a, uh, a family here on the Freeride World Tour. It's, it's really good to see. Dude, that, fi that final pillar line was One more last rider to come for the snowboard category to wrap things up for our first category. And what... <laughs> A bunch of action we've seen thrown down, especially from this man. Out of Jackson Hole, Travis Rice. Amazing run from him. Uh, uh, just as amazing as his run two years ago when he won the fourth time. Uh, so score for Sammy Lubke, 35.67, sixth place at the moment. It's uh, quite tight down there, and it might actually matter for points at the end of the day. But someone joining the Freeride World Tour family now, Keita Yamazaki, winning the three-star here last week, wildcarded onto the stop of the Freeride World Tour here in Japan. He is from Hakuba, he is the super local, and he is on course. Great drone shot showing the Japanese Alps of his home mountain in the background. Going, look his right, right his left so far towards the same area that Gigi Roof did. Yeah, as we mentioned in the pre-show, this is only a little glimpse of what the Japanese Alps in the backdrop have to offer. There are tons of ridges just like we have the competition venue on. And this guy, as a local, I wonder if he's ridden this venue before. He's heading out further and further to the lookers' right, right as left, where the steeper part of the venue is, as you were saying before. Uh, a couple of people found it a little bit tough in there. It uh, seems to be a bit more exposed to the wind and may have created a little bit more variable snow. Uh, Christopher Del Gelvin going down and Travis Rice fighting his way through. So let's see how it goes for Keita today. Definitely following the good snow, good quality. Pow turns, oh, slashing slash. it. But of course, if you want to pump up your score, you should get into the air or doing something really creative. He gets the powder. He's <laughs> getting barreled. Powder Hunter Award for now. He's getting barreled, correct. So pitted. Do you watch the WSL on the side here? <laughs> Uh, do we have YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it seems like a beautiful wave 
top to bottom. Throwing his hands out there, I think he might have not found what he's looking for. Some cutbacks, some slashes. Yeah, he seems a little bit disappointed though. I mean, like, really nice powder slashes. Seems like he was hitting out with the purpose to the lookers right of the venue. I imagine he was probably hitting to that steeper zone, but uh, not getting off the ground, not putting any tricks or grabs in. So I think he's disappointed he hasn't found his features that he was looking for. Rode some really nice snow, and uh, I wonder how that will compare. You can actually see on the very right side of the venue, you can see his run, you can see his line. And uh, as it is a piece of art, or is 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 an art form, snowboarding and skiing in the backcountry, and a master of art of this art is sitting in the hot seat, and he will be staying there and being on the top of the podium in the prize on the prize giving ceremony tonight. Travis because Rice. it was the last rider we've seen for today in the snowboard man category. That's right, we haven't got the scores in for Katie yet, but uh, the judging lines were in the red, indicating he will not be overtaking Travis Rice or probably anyone else on the podium. So Travis Rice taking home the win at the first ever World Tour stop in the Hakuba Valley. Last year we didn't manage to pull one off. This year we've already got the guys snowboarding done and uh, Aaron Style down there for Kato, but the other line's in the green. So let's see how it compares. Travis Rice just about ready to celebrate. I'm sure he'll uh, enjoy the party tonight. Last time when he won the four star, he bought a drink for literally everyone in the bar. Stood up on the bar and yarded out, next round's on me. Threw it out, and must have been a couple of thousand, and uh, everyone had a good time. Thank you, Travis. Kata Yamazaki coming with 44.67. So that's behind Blake Ham and in front of the other guys that had serious control issues and crashes. So uh, coming in sixth today, Kata, uh, first ever World Tour comp. Welcome to the family. Nice to have you along. And I believe that means that we have. First place, Travis Rice. Second place, we have also super big name, Gigi Roof. And third place, we've got Davey Baird backing up his two podiums in the first two competitions last year with a podium at the first competition here. So big ups to everyone riding today. There's Blake Ham coming out of the gate so hot. Huge backflip. I think that might have been the the biggest hit so far in the and the guy snowboarding today, but Travis Rice, no, that seven from Travis must have been bigger. It was a different type. It was a it was a transfer, like hitting a ridge to the side with a lot of speed and staying in the air for a long time. But uh, Blake Ham, huge backflip off a cliff in the fall line to start the day off, set the tone for the day, and it has gone just like we thought it would. Huge hits from amazing riders, and here we and are. With here the we are with the overall ranking of today's competition. Travis Rice, no surprise, with a 95 yeah. top score, followed by. <laughs> Another legend ripper, Gigi Roof, and finishing or rounding up the podium with Davy Baird from US of A. Thanks for the show, guys. It was impressive to watch. Pretty American dominated top five there. Big ups to the North Americans coming over here and killing it. Next up, we got the guys from the skiing. They are already set in the start gate, ready to drop in and trying to challenge the show from the snowboard man. Ski man category stacked with some amazing riders. Also some last minute wild card surprises. That's right, unfortunately we've had a few injuries in the skiing guides category before the season has started. So it's been a little bit of a change in the lineup. Uh, but still some big names that we were expecting to be here, some big names that we didn't know were gonna be here. Uh, got a recap coming up of what's going on in the ski guys category. I'm going to show you a few of the names we're going to watch out for, of course. It's a huge field. Everyone has the potential to win, but these are definitely the names we have to watch out for, especially here in Hakuba, Japan. Christopher Turdale, the turtle, the defending World Tour champion. He throws big backflips, but that's not his main, main thing. I would say his main, main thing is just skiing incredibly fast through technical zones and doing huge airs. Backflips if he wants to, but this guy's where the tricks are at. On a very consistent basis, another one, Marcus Eder with creativity and gnarly lines potential. Anytime he shows up, he showed it several times, and especially this highlight of the season, the butter three of the bottom cliff in Verbier finals. That's right, Taisuke Kusnoki, Taisuke as he is known. He is the local rider, the super ripper, the power surfer, the guy who won the four star here when Travis won the four star. Uh, really smooth, styly rider, likes to put in a lot of grabs and I would not be surprised to see him do multiple tricks today. Here's another guy who does multiple tricks. Tanner Hall, no one has to explain to uh, who he is. He is a legend of our sport, had an 
experiences and successes in all categories of free skiing. Half pipe, big air, free riding, you name it. And now he's back. Looking he's to add back a free in competition. To a and he's aiming for the big title of the season. He will be with us for the whole season as a wild card. That's right. Good to have you, Tanner. Good to have you, all of you guys. Here's the start list. Mikhail Bimbos, Drew Tabke, Eric Pollard. Sorry, Eric Pollard. Andrew Pollard. I'm thinking of a different American skier that I like. Uh, Carl, back after injury last year. Uh, wild card, back onto the tour because he was injured when he qualified. You also winning the three-star here and... Uh, Qualifying himself for the tour, Liam Pfeiffer, a Canadian rookie, Jan pulling onto tour after the the injuries that we had. He came fourth and the top three usually qualified, but we had so many injuries that fourth made it through this year. Welcome, Reina Barkeria, tenth year in a row on the tour. Welcome back, Reina. It's great to have you. Marcus Eder, the super styly one, and his buddy Fabio, who rides with him here in Japan for filming. Tanner, like we said, no, he's no introduction. Taisuke, back on the tour as well, like local wildcard for this stop. Jan Rossis, super duper swish rider. Uh, Berkeley Patterson, the young gun from America, did good in the first two stops last year. I hope he has a good one today. Imar, Kai, Christopher Turdell, Craig Murray, Tom Pfeiffer, Griffin Miller. This is just such a stacked field. Like you said, anyone could win here today. And Vadik Gorak and Leo Slemet, unfortunately, on the list, but not in the start gate. They are watching from home, unfortunately, injured for this event. Hopefully, they will be back. All the healing vibes to you guys. We get back to... All, unfortunately, also have a few other riders that can join us, and they even are out for the whole season. But we got to focus in first on the rider on course, Mikael Bimbos opening up the ski man category. Mikael Bimbos winning the last two events. So if he wins this one, it'll be three in a row. I'm not sure if that's ever been done before, but uh, winning the Verbe Extreme and winning the uh, stop in Austria to put himself second overall. Sending it fast, really, really fast rider. And taking this one pretty deep as well. These weren't huge ears, but he went so fast off of me, turned them into huge ears. So, wow, I'm excited to see what he's got off the, the larger features down low if he's going to ski this fast the whole way. And there's a big cliff. Whoa. Boom, landing it clean, passing all the bomb holes from the previous snowboard category. That's what he's known for, and he's hailing down that r that run. Yeah, Mikael, this is sick. I'm loving watching this. You're just so fast and smooth. You're coming off a confident time, winning the last two competitions, putting in some shifties, riding extremely fast. You just look super strong, and it's legs of steel right there. He's already at the finish of the judging area, and he's down. That was record time. <laughs> that definitely was a record time. You have to know we are not timing. There is a no clock there racing, but definitely uh, the category of fluidity of the judging criteria is a big one and definitely that's on the plus side on his run here. Like his takeoff is out of the screen when he lands. Like he turned that small feature into a long jump. And that's definitely his biggest cliff of his run. Boom. Stomping it clean. Turning it into a double. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah, a really creative rider. I loved his hair over the shoot in Austria last year. So cool to see him playing with his venue. It looks like he just skied down doing turns and happened to go off massive cliffs while he was skiing along. A little bit surprised that we didn't see a backflip of him because he can do even doubles from uh, natural features. Wow, that's, I'd love to see that in the World Tour comp, mate. Uh, score coming in. Aaron style and technique was down on the, the judging bars, so indicating the score won't be super, super high, but uh, 70 points, pretty solid for first person out of the gate. Uh, I think here, as I've been a previous uh, judge, I know that they have uh, putting this score as a, yeah. as a base mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, the, the experienced judges, they know that we're going to see a lot of more action, especially on the Aaron style uh, segment and uh, to have Woo. the room to allow the, the wow. correct ranking. That's why they put it into 70. The score of 70. Next rider up in the start gate, Drew Tapke. Previous World Tour winner, very creative rider, the Transferinator on a transfer Corsa. So here we go. I think he's going to do wow. some big side hits today. With Transferinator, Neil refers to his skills to transfer from one side to the other of mountains like just this like that. <laughs> this one goes definitely into that category. And this venue offers a lot of possibility to just do that. Yeah, Drew. Finding transitions. <laughs> oh, he just... I think he wanted to get into... 
Oh, I was sending that one. He's skiing across the course at right of knots, sending every transition as deep as he can. And I think he might have found some variable snow in that second landing, whereas one of his skis came up behind him. Damn, it's hard to finish the sentence with so much actions back to back. Ooh, another fast run. Cool to see the different styles between Mikel and Drew. He's, you know, Mikel also a fast skier, also a styly skier, likes to send things big. But Drew, just being creative on the other side of the venue, hadn't really seen anyone right here yet in the snowboard men. But Drew going over there and making up his own style, doing his own thing, being creative and original, which we said would be an important thing on this course today. Absolutely. Seeing no tracks coming out of the forest is an indicator of or originality. Here we have his top section. Stomping it clean. Little surprised again about not seeing a backflip. Yeah, Just don't want to jinx you. But yeah, he is the man of backies and threes. Yeah, he's running in Andorra last year. His famous backflip and a big three. This year taking some transitions pretty deep. But uh, like we saw at the start of the snowboard category, a little bit funky takeoffs seem to get people not looking as smooth in the air as they usually do. Control a little bit down for Drew. Uh, so let's see what the score is. It seems to be coming in now, and uh, I'll be interested to see how it compares to Mikkel. Yeah, pretty similar, I would say. Uh, a little bit more on the plus side on the Aaron style. So 75. Otherwise, pretty, pretty similar, and that's why they're not too far from each other. 70 and 75 for the first two scores of the snow, uh, ski category. Still a lot of riders to come, some heavy hitters, but now we're going to have our first rookie, Coming from the World Qualifiers, North American, the Americas section. Andrew Pollard. We've got two Pollards fresh on the tour this year. Andrew Pollard and his sister, Jacqueline Pollard. They have both qualified from the North American Freeride World Qualifiers last year. So good to have them as a sibling team on the tour this year. Welcome to the both of them. Excited to see how it goes for them. I bet he is pretty psyched and pretty nervous right now. We even have two siblings coming in from the qualifiers. Two sets of siblings. Yeah, two sets of siblings, you're right. So Andrew Pella dropping in, 10 seconds. Short 10 seconds, there he's on course now. And I, I bet he watched Drew Tabke growing up as a skier in, in previous competitions and now he's competing against him. The rider after him skiing so fast that he's out of the frame on the drone. Change to the long lens shot because this guy is super sending. <laughs> Big side hit there. Styling it out, the shifty. Coming off that a little bit on a different angle to what I expected, maybe different to what he expected, but still skiing so fast down here. Knowing a trick or two about competing, keeping up the flow and the momentum is always a good sign for the judges that you're motivated, you really want to go for it. And heading out, look is right to the steep part of the venue that we saw Chris Galvin come unstuck on. Travis Rice managed to hold it together on. How will it go for our first skier in this part of the venue? Andrew Pollard, following tracks. You, you know line. Boom, boom, boom. Oh! Nice shifty. Looking smooth through there, but not taking the biggest of ears. Oh, Maybe that section looks different to how he expected it. From the top, it can always look different to how it looks from underneath, but doing a cool double, unfortunately getting a little bit of a side slap on the bottom of that last feature of his run. Yeah, getting bucked off at the very last feature on his double on the second pillow. Ay, oh, damn it, he will be bumped because the other parts of his run where it's a super fluid, cruisy, great features in there. Just holding on in that little segment, but yeah. uh, managed well. And you have to know this segment at the bottom here is the steepest of the venue. Yeah, solid skiing from Andrew there, but I think there must be something in that part of the venue, something funky going on in that shady, steep, pillowy tree area, because I've seen a lot of people having a little bit of trouble there. It's not the first one. Unfortunately, control, air, and silent technique being low as a result of that, as you see, getting bucked on those bottom pillows. So it was pretty smooth, uh, fast, and stylish run until that point, but I think that would have really hurt his score and mean that he would have been similar for me to the first two riders, Drew and Mikel, but unfortunately will be below 50 in this case. You are spot on. Unfortunately, the start of the Freyard World Tour career campaign for Andrew Pollard is not going according to plan. But there is always one resort you can uh, cross out, what do you call it in English? One, one resort, resort that you can, can throw away. Throw away, that's it. Carl Regner Eriksson, welcome to the Freeride World Tour. You have waited a while. You have competed on the World Qualifiers for a long time, qualified yourself to the 2018 World Tour, got injured here in Japan, missed the competition season, and now you are here. 
getting on course with a fast gun away. Drone struggling to keep up. Fast skier, solid and stylish. What's he got for us today? Carl Renier on course already with a backflip at the top section. Stomping. Oh, yes. What a way to start off your World Tour career. Taking the same year as Jonathan Penfield and Blake Ham, but on the Jonathan Penfield angle. A little bit wild in the air. These takeoffs must have something funky in them because these this many good riders don't all do that same kind of arm wobble for no reason, you know? You're yeah, all right. And uh, it is also the nervousness of a first stop of the Freyard World Tour coming into play as well, pretty sure. Traversing his cross must have his eye on a feature over there. Brother Ole just arrived, and big shout-out to him. I bet he's watching from the bottom. Ole also very close to qualifying for the World Tour. I'd love to see him there one day too. Carl also too fast for the drone. He's just getting right on out of that shot. And down to the final cool one now. Does he have another feature for us, or is he already at the end of the judging zone? I think that's kind of it. Definitely the biggest part of the action was shown from Carl at the top. Unfortunately, he couldn't keep up the momentum of his great start. So it's not going to be one of the top, top scores of today, I can tell you that. But the That's first what trick. That's definitely the first trick. The first trick that we've seen, backflipping out of the gate on his first feature. So I think that'll treat him reasonably well. Uh, it, it'll be interesting since he slowed down a little bit in the second part of his run, how mm. they'll compare to the other guys that ski fast and float with no tricks. Judges criteria coming up. Of course, the judges all only compare now to the runs we've seen so far, but they also take into consideration what is possible for, uh, to be shown from the, the riders to come. So Aaron's style bar down there, probably reflected in the little bit of an arm waving that he had in the air on one or two of the hits. Uh, Carl's usually super smooth, stylish and fluid. So like I was saying, I think the... The takeoffs might be a little bit funky somehow. Coming in at 61.67, sitting third for now, not that far behind Mikael Bimbos and Drew Tamke, but uh, got a lot more talented riders to come. So I'd say that probably be a mid-pack result in the end, you know, 50 being your your average perfect score. Perfectly average score, I suppose <laughs> I should say. Yeah. yeah. So who do we have next? But where you end up in the overall ranking or in the ranking of today is always dependent on the other riders. Sometimes a 50 can bring you into the top 10, sometimes a 50 can be very close to the bottom of the, the pack. That's right, and Yu Sasaki on course now, the Japanese rider winning the two star here two years ago, but unfortunately not being able to make it to the four star. So good to have him back here. I guess he won the three star this time, so two competition ones here in wins in Hakuba already, taking it deep off the top hit with the 360. Similar transfer to Drew, little bit of a back slip, see one of the skis coming up, but super solid start from you. Oh yeah, that's what you call a great start. Unfortunately, not the cleanest of the landings, but showing some confidence and motivation. Yeah, super fast. Taking that second hit deep and getting out into the power fields now. This one looks nice. Always tweaking, always showing some confidence in the air. No arm waving whatsoever. Going for the safety grab. I wonder if this part of the course could be a little bit sun affected. Maybe underneath, not the power itself, but taking it Ooh. deep. Just missing a bush in the landing, holding it together really strongly. It looks like the snow is a little bit funky on skis, maybe more so than a snowboard, but great run from you. And really fast. Cool. Super fast, super good to see the local rider representing. Oh yeah, he flashed that run. And uh, I think uh, one of the best runs so far with combining tricks and fluid riding. Here we have the top section. Unfortunately, with one ski in the air, what do you call that one? Stage two, something like landing? Yeah, I'd call that one. I don't want to be a judge today. I, I, I like this run, but they might hurt him for that landing at the top. Going for the safety grab on that one, though. So the judging criteria looking good for line and fluidity. The fluidity was really good, actually. I did, did enjoy that about his run. It was super smooth and nice to watch. So can we have the possibility for a first ever Asian podium in a free-eyed world to a stop? That'd be pretty cool to see. The possibility is there, especially as we have another heavy hitter to come with Taisuke Kuzunoki. But here we have the score of Yu Zazaki with a 78.33 and currently in the hot seat. It sends him right to the top of the podium so far. One star here, a three star here, and would be nice to add a world to a stop, wouldn't it? 
Not in the 80s, though. The judges indicating that they think that there are probably more big runs to come where they will have to fit people in between the 78 and the 100. Uh, just between 78 and 75, that's, uh, they're saying they don't think they'll fit that many people but him, between him and, uh, was it Drew on 75? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Who we got up next, though? Liam Pfeiffer, the Canadian rookie. Getting the GoPro on. Getting the angle set. He's just going to go. He doesn't care. <laughs> he just wants to be on the course. He must be super psyched. He's getting out of the gate and into the zone. Super fast down this part of the, the venue, into the power field. And don't be confused. Later on, we're going to see a similar name. Another Pfeiffer, his twin brother, also qualified for this year's Pre-Ed World Tour. Let's see what the couple can uh, achieve. Uh, great drone shot, drone shot here, showing the the fluted spinal nature of this venue. And Liam heading out to the lookers right. I uh, hope the the slightly funky snow that some of the other riders have found out there doesn't get him hung up. But he's doing good so far, slashing that power. Yeah, as you mentioned, what a shot, what a power today. It's a long venue. <laughs> Had a good chat with Liam and Berkeley about the difficulties of qualifying through the the north american four-star fwq scene and they've really had to fight for it so i'm sure he's pretty psyched about being here today first ever world tour stop here in hakuba and guys be aware the riders from north america they're not used to visual inspection it's a little different format there this is the first time usually they ride without having had hands on feet on on the venue yeah this is a Liam different ball game First ever world tour run, potentially first ever visual inspection, and Liam is stoked to be down. Nice uh, power slashy, tree airy. Remember the the lookers right is steeper than the lookers left of the venue, so probably get a bit more points for the line score of going out there. But just super solid, you know, good skiing, nice control, finding creative ears. Could be a good score for Liam. With a double in the shady part there. No tricks so far. Definitely, uh, the game plan was to put down a solid score for the first Freya World Tour stop of the season of his career. Let's see what it ends up in which kind of score. Four lines in the green, one in the red. Not very far into the red, but just saying that fluidity was a little bit lower. A uh, little bit of hesitation, just making sure he found the right line, which is good. You know, you want to find your right line. You want to ski where you want. Uh, you know, we saw one of the snowboarders, the Japanese sto snowboarder, uh, not finding his line and being quite disappointed about that. So it's definitely better to make sure you find your lining. If that uh, causes you a little bit of hesitation, then so be it. Uh, and next time, try to avoid that hesitation as well as finding your line. But good start to to the FWT career for Liam. Uh, got the score coming in soon. But just for now, we've got uh, Yu sitting in the hot seat. And good to have a Japanese rider sitting in the hot seat at the Japanese stop. It's pretty cool to see. Oh, yes, he will be pleased. And you with the peak performance beanie on his head as well as the peak performance banner in the background. Got a couple of peak performance riders here today. I think Taisuke, uh, both the Japanese men's skiers are, are on peak performance. Liam Pfeiffer, 65.33, coming in fourth at the moment. Uh, a bit of a side, side shake of the head. I think that means uh, I'm not happy, but I'm not sad. <laughs> do, I, do I have to stay here and hold my skis in front of the banner a little bit longer? Uh, no, you're not filming me anymore. But no, it must be great to be down. And welcome to the Freeride World Tour. Good to have you guys. And Got some really strong rookies. We had a great rookie year last year. Was not easy to re-qualify with only 12 riders. That's right, and another rookie coming up now, Jan Dumax Baldron. He came fourth on the FWQ in Region 1 last year, the Eurasia region. Uh, skiing for Dynastar, and uh, one of the only riders on Dynastar here, apart from uh, Reina Bakarid, I believe, uh, getting wildcarded onto the tour as a result of the amount of injuries in the guy skiing. So good to have you here, Jan. Welcome. He arrived the night before the first possible competition down Friday, and starting with a big 360, stomping it. Yep. Definitely a stomp, not sending it as far as the backflip of uh, Colvinier, but this second hit definitely in the fall line and with high speed. Yeah, landing just next to the bomb hole from Blake Clarkson, uh, Blake uh, Ham, I believe. Oh, coming a bit unstuck there, though. That what funky happened? takeoff, getting the best of him. The drone followed him on that one. 
Yeah, there must be something funky going on on the takeoffs here of a variable snow layer or something in some of them because, you know, Jan's a super solid rider. I've seen him riding on the qualifiers and always looks pretty solid and never seen him really come unstuck like that before without any warning. So nice run from Jan. Welcome to the World Tour. Nice 360 up the top and uh, started out enjoying the power. Probably be a little bit disappointed about that, but coming unstuck on that, that pillow in the middle. But... um. Welcome, welcome to the World Tour. It's not your last, it's maybe your first run, but it's not your last, li last line, last run. What's happening to me? A few lines in the red here in the judging criteria. Line, judges like the line, but uh, the other criteria, not as high for the score. Getting a little bit backseat on that middle ear as well. The score coming in now. Seventh at the moment for Jan Dumarks Bladron. Uh, not the best day for Jan, but there'll be plenty more days. You're here for the rest of the season, mate. You have a full season World Tour wildcard, so we will see you in Kicking Horse in Canada in a week or two. So Jan, down, you in the box seat, in the hot seat, sitting pretty there, in front of Drew Tabke and Mikael Bimbos, a former Freeride World Tour winner and a current World Tour Extreme Verbier champion so a pretty impressive place to be for the local rider and another heavy hitter another former champion coming on up Mikel Bimbos was not the right graphic there this is Rainer Barkeriad he is on course now is also a super fast rider really solid strong likes the big mountain style and too fast for the drone coming into the same top hit as Carl also with a backflip Sending Huge. it deep and stomping it clean. That's exactly the way to start a Freeride World Tour season. Oh, yes, a veteran, and everyone calls him the free rider, the only one who wants to, not only one, but one of the riders who wants to just have gnarly terrain. But he proves everyone wrong. With a backflip. He's been working on his backflips lately. I saw it on his Instagram. You can follow this guy. He's always got interesting content. He's a... Uh, Getting over to the lookers right of the venue now. Uh, it's more the terrain that he's usually into, the steep, gnarly stuff. Managed to chuck a big backflip in. He's now he's into the more technical area. How much style did he put into that? Yeah, that was sick. Here, that's his home turf. Steep and gnarly terrain. There you go, Rana. Doubling down through that rocky section there. Making it look super easy. As we've seen, quite a few riders having trouble in that steep section. Not for Mayor of Stomptown, Mr. Rainy Barkered. So Rainy Barkered and Carla Regnier, two of the crew representing for Sweden. Still got Christopher Turdell to, to come. And uh, in the Scandinavian... Here we have the highlight of his run, right out of the gate with a big backflip, stomping it clean. He had to wave a little bit with his arms to slow down the rotation, sending it deeper than expected. Jason Craig here, Terrier coming. <laughs> Just looking so solid, this guy. That snow maybe a little bit variable in that uh, rocky, poppy forest section, but um, I think he might be sitting on top for now. It's okay. <laughs> Here we have everything in the green. Line and Aaron style. Usually he does it with sending big, gnarly cliffs, but this time it was a big backflip of a natural hit right out of the gate. Yeah, it's interesting for me, for Rainer, his uh, air and style was quite a lot higher than his fluidity, which is it's usually the other way around for him. Uh, I guess that was because he had put a little bit of traversing in to get across from that top feature where he backflipped to the bottom section where he's the, the steep and uh, slightly more technical zone. But uh, cool that he's getting the air and style up these days, because if he can combine that, then it's looking at another you know really big season for him. And there's 11th year on the tour. 10th year, sorry. <laughs> yeah. 76.67, Rainer Bakariad sitting second at the moment. So just behind Yu Sasaki. Uh, I guess they like Yu's 360 and uh, slightly higher fluidity, I suppose, is probably what took it for Yu over Rainer in that uh, in that way. You know, he's uh, only marginally higher, but uh, he went out to the lookers left after the, the top hit that he managed to trick and uh, kept the fluidity a little bit higher. So uh, big ups to Yu after some huge heavy hitters. You know, it's Mikael Bimbos, Drew Tabke, Carl Regner, Eriksson, you know, and uh, now Reina Bakari and, and Jan Dumarki, like everyone that's been before him, amazing riders. So to be on the top at the moment, it's amazing. Another rider who can definitely set the bar for the riders to come is the Italian Marcus Eda in the start gate. Marcus Eda from South Tyrol. 
uh, one of my favorite skiers, I'm going to say. I'm just going to put it out there. They, these guys are all my favorite skiers, but Marcus just putting it sideways and enjoying the power like that is just such a pleasure to watch. And will we see a seven of him? I wouldn't be surprised. Don't want to jinx him. Flat, flat spin three. Really nice flat three, Japan. Japan is the name of the grab. We are also in Japan, but just uh, wanted to clarify that. Huge transfer 360, not the cleanest of the landings. That was so sick, though. I don't think that the angle really did it justice. That was a pretty huge transfer, and now just absolutely sending it through this double down area that we saw Andrew come unstuck on before. Looking a little bit wild himself, but staying on his feet for now. And hopefully the whole run down, of course. Mark is following a track from uh, Yu Sasaki, I believe. So really cool creative line so far, putting in a spread eagle. He ticked a lot of boxes, aggressive riding. You can see the little bridge all the way to the finish corral. Score coming in for Marcus Ida. I'd feel reasonably confident he'd be sitting in podium contention right now. Oh, yes. But something I'm interested in is that the snowboard men all came out firing with big tricks and just looked super confident in that snow. I think it might be snowboard of snow. Marcus Ida's still doing a super good job in there, though. 86.67, knocking Yu Sasaki out of the hot seat, getting a hug from Mikel Bimbos. This is the camaraderie I'm talking about in the world tour here. Big time. What a solid score. The judges rewarded the heavy heavy action loaded run of Marcus Eder even if you said technique was a little down because of his rowdy run at the bottom but his good good friend now in the start gate uh, start gate the Austrian Fabio Studer out of Koblach for Alberg local rider from Silvretta Montafon your home area yes represents and I'm going to get patriotic about New Zealand when Craig Murray runs you can you can say whatever you want here mate. <laughs> and uh, don't be surprised about another few stylish tricks with a oh no ah oh, damn it Fabio just going down so hard to see that what a talented rider unfortunately he was sick just a week before such a nice cork three off that top hit. It looked like he was going to be solid in landing. It's like one of his skis maybe dug a little bit differently. Maybe the snow is a little bit funky. He can do this trick in his sleep. He's done so many natural hits with a flat three. Or a cork three. Oh, cork three, sorry. <laughs> no worries. He can do the both of them. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, he's just, just cruising God. now. It doesn't look like he has any control issues. Just got a little bit hung up in that landing off the... The first, I thought he landed in a clean section, but maybe like mm -hmm. caught the side of someone else's bomb hole landing or track or something. But this is becoming a popular air now. Big ups to Yu Sasaki for opening it up because it is sniper. Doesn't quite snipe, it catches the tree. Hope he's okay. Yes, he is. Oh, Ooh, you're scared you're me, Fabio. Yeah, you don't want to hit a tree coming down from about seven, eight meters. Yeah, plus. Yep. Well, this is this is a little bit a um, little bit scary for me now because there's now going to be a track going off that drop into the tree, you know, because there's there's tracks going left and right of it and one going straight at it. So I really hope that the riders have done their homework; they know exactly what angle to take off that kind of drop because it's tough. Tough take off there, not a lot of space and just a little bit over rotated. What would you say? Yeah, it's just I think the landing wasn't the perfect angle, and uh, it's hard to know that from the top. He was solid in the air and got a little bit unlucky on the on the landing. Yes. He'll have another chance another day, and I'm looking forward to him taking that because he's a really fun rider to watch. So uh, almost uh, we are exactly halfway through the the guy skiing now, uh, and the next big name coming up. Oh yeah, yeah. Here we are, the man who needs no introduction, but we're going to give him one anyway. After the score comes in, for Fabio Studer, only five points unfortunately for Fabio. Uh, hitting that tree, I think, would really have knocked his score. Uh, don't scare the judges is, is a pretty solid rule, and I was scared. I guess the judges were too, so uh, that's the reason for the, the very low score for Fabio. He takes a lot of premieres on the Freeride World Tour, and definitely we didn't have anyone having that many X Games medals around his neck in the past. Of course, he's no stranger to free riding. He has been kicking or hitting back country kickers and big lines in Alaska for years now. And now it's time to show his skills on the Free Ride World Tour. Tanner Hall on course. Tanner lining up. This uh, first natural hit that we've seen other people tricking off already. What do we got? 
huge 360. Nice cork three. Nice grab in the cork three two, stomping it. Lining up another hit straight away with the backflip and stomping that one too. Coming a little bit unstuck on the run out. A little bit of a side slap there, was it? Yeah, just a little bit of a delay. And a 360 as well. Cork three, backflip, 360. Putting in a nice grab there too. Styling his way down here. Grab to Shifty. How no. many tricks can you do in one run? <laughs> yeah, no surprise that we see a ton of tricks. He has them all in the bag. Up to a triple backy. He has them all. Lining up another feature down the bottom here. A little bit blind in that bottom takeoff. Kind of hard to see what you're doing in coming to that bottom area. Tanner lining up another feature. Bouncing off something into the end of the judging area. Wicked run from the first uh, will to a stop for Tanner Hall. Good to see him here. Good to have him here. Nice to see a show like that, see how creative you can be and put how many tricks into a run like that. Uh, yeah, star-studded lineup here today, just one of the many big names. And uh, I wonder how that score will com compare with the others. It was uh, pretty pretty styly, pretty smooth. I'd say that his fluidity will be high and his line choice as well. But maybe the control will be a little bit lower, uh, mainly because of the run out on this backflip that we're just and about to see. Here he is with the backflip, sending it deep on his tails. Dan had a little control issue just after trying to hold on on his tails, but straight into a 360. It didn't hesitate at any of those uh, jumps. Just so solid in the airs. Such pleasure to watch. Tan Hall, 81 points, second in the ski win right now, pushing Yusasaki to third and uh, sitting just behind our uh, current leader, Marcus Ida. No surprise to have two very creative and trick-skilled riders on such a venue in the top two spots. Currently in the hot seat, Marcos Eda out of Italy, second place, Tanner Hall, USA. And it was so nice to hear that he has the goosebumps, he has the butterflies in his stomach, so much experience of competing on the big levels and now being back in the competition, in the, wearing the bib. Yeah, long time since I've seen Tanner Hall wearing the bib. Looks a little bit windy up at the top now. In the commentary booth down at the bottom, we, we don't see a breath of wind. Maybe a tiny, tiny bit of branch moving and leaf shaking, but uh, it looks like Ty Ski will be happy to get off that windy ridge into the smooth power and down to the finish area where we are sitting. Looking forward to welcoming him. Here we have Taisuke, one of the more stylish riders on this planet. Everything he does, he tries to style it out. That's right, riding for peak performance, wildcard into this event. No surprise, also being a passionate snow surfer, house surfer. Yeah, put some really styly down runs down on the world tour last year. That was tail grabs off cliffs. Heading out to the lookers, lookers right. Cutting a little bit back towards the, the main ridge feature in the middle. Enjoying the power where he grew up with. Coming from the North Island, Hokkaido, where they even have more snow than here in, Chip in uh, Hakuba. But obviously not as much sun as we enjoy today. And not as many Alps. So yes. getting out to the steeper section as well now on the lookers right. So let's Travis bouncing through there. Oh no, Getting coming back off. Unfortunately, his highlight of his run, he wanted to really nail that bottom section, very technical area, but. Not the first person to have trouble in there. No. Nope. So Taisuke not able to put down what he wanted to do today, but still great to have you here. Love to watch you riding your super styly smooth gear and like to see you in the World Tour again sometime. Just for now, your compatriot Yu, Sas Sas uh, Yu Sasiki uh, sitting in third place on the central podium. So yeah. what, what's going on in the snow layer here? He pops off, and then coming off the next one, it's just way harder than, it, than I think he expects. It's gets a little bit bucked into the backseat before he takes off, and if you're already backseat when you take off, it's it's no helpful landing. Yeah, that's uh, the, the wind effect or the wind-affected snow had a lot of wind with the snowfall. 
That yeah, means it's just that a little more the compressed the and uh, yeah. probably you get a little more response that you think you're getting, especially in the steep part. So Taisuke sitting 10th at the moment just in front of Fabio Studer, but apart from that, not in front of anyone, I don't believe. Thank you for the performance today, though. Uh, everyone that skis here is putting their body in their line and putting themselves through mental and physical stress, and we appreciate it. We appreciate this, the show on snow. Who we got next? Who's this guy? Here we have Jan Rossis. He came as a rookie two years ago and is a solid force. Very consistent. He has a few tricks in the bag, and especially his line choice is something I remember from his runs in the past two years. Always solid, creative, and going big. Nice 360 tail off that first hit. Little bit of a side slap maybe on the landing, kind of landing side hill, pretty tough to, to stomp that clean, but puts up a powder cloud and skis out of it. Now charging at the side hit. Super sick transfer, first person to do that. Cutting straight back across the fall line to make sure he gets as many features in as possible. Really working that rate, left to right, right to left. Getting into the trees where it gets steeper and steeper, and he's familiar to such terrain. Being out of Verbier, Switzerland. Yeah, I don't see, so it was actually my pick to win today. Ooh, have you, be, have you done the fun bet? Ooh, the peak performance fun bet, yes I have. And you can do that at home too. Yeah, I'm just charging through this, pal. Taking the Stompies. right angle, clearing the tree to his left. Oh yeah, that's experience. With his young age, probably he takes a good look at the face with being a smart guy, not only on skis, but only also off skis. That's right, he's a mathlete. Mathlete Jan, he's doing a, a master's in physics, or maybe he's finished it now, but a uh, smart guy, smart skier, really cool bottom air. I like that a lot. That's a section that lots of people have skied through and no one else has hit that air, so... You know, it takes a lot of finding that kind of stuff. You know, it looks like, you, oh, yeah, of course, you just ski straight into it when you're watching it on TV at home. But looking at it from the other side of the valley and, and semi-fog for a couple of days, you know, you've got to be pretty sure about something like that. Pretty pretty big ups to this guy for finding it, hitting it, and stomping it. Unfortunately, his ear and style and technique is down, probably as a result of that control issue on one of his other ears. But uh, overall impressive performance from this man. Big, big bummer. If you have a full run and one issue just takes you off a good score. What a shame. But you better go down trying than not trying at all. That's right, Jan. A bit of a perfectionist. I think you'll be a little bit disappointed with that today. Uh, but super solid skier. He's got the rest of the season in front of him. You know, I, I would not be surprised if he is skiing in Verbier, his hometown. Which is the finals, of course. Top 12 guys qualify for Verbier. It was 13 last year, but due to the number of injuries that we've had in the guys' skiing category, there's only 12 going through this year in order to be able to take wild cards back as a result of injuries. Uh, there's the Peeps Banner. Big ups to Peeps. They are the new safety partner, along with Black Diamond of the Free World Tour. Jan Rals is coming in at 6 at the moment. 70.67, not a bad score. I believe that's still in front of, uh, of Mikael Bimbos, who rode first and uh, didn't have any control issues. You know, he rode fast and fluid and, and did some, uh, some cool airs with uh, tweaked out shifties and things. But uh, Jan with his creative run, uh, you know, sending two different hits that hadn't been hit by anyone before and uh, stomping them really clean. Although he might have had a little bit of a control issue on one of his landings, I think. Maybe because of the angle of the landing rather than his... Uh, his stomp legs, uh, sitting in, uh, what was that, fifth or sixth at the moment? Still pretty good. Definitely up there. We had some, uh, we have a solid pack around the 70s, 70s to 78. And then, of course, the two top guys so far with Marcus Eda and Tanner Hall separating themselves off the pack with an 85 and an 81. Next up, Berkeley Patterson. He is back on the tour. He was a rookie last year. Really impressed us with his first couple of stops. Uh, sends it really hard. Has good tricks as well. Was consistently injured last year and still competing and doing well. So it'll be exciting to see what he can do this year with a fresh body. Always known for going fast and fluid. Taking airs bigger than some of the other competitors. 
and also throwing a trick in a two, and this is the venue to do it. Sick flat three and stomping it. Little bit of a hands down, but I don't care. That was an amazing hit to see. No one else has flipped that, I don't think. Putting in a tail grab off the top here, flat three off the next one. Just looking really solid. He must be training hard because he is skiing strong. Ripping it, as I said, full speed as usual. Putting it sideways, airing off that too. I feel like this is a combination of uh, Marcus Eder and... He wants to have one in the bank. More events to come, but what a solid run we've seen so far from him. And he's down at the finish, just past the judging line. Yeah, nice Berkeley putting in that tail grab at the top, setting up to come around to this flat three. Boom, grabbing it. Yeah, hands down, but not back down, so that won't take too many points off a score, I don't think. Yeah, control still in the in the greens. In the yellow greens, but much, much better than being in the red. So I think we're looking at a good score here for Berkeley today. Coming back in strong after a podium finish or a fourth place, I believe, at the first stop last year. But before, I think the, uh, the first time visual inspection is a bit of a, a difficult thing for for a, a World Tour rookie. And Berkeley Patterson coming on 67 points, sitting eighth place at the moment. Uh, maybe the the angle that we had wasn't as good as the one the judges had for, for his landing on that flat three. Uh, but overall, solid run, uh, looking at a top 10 for his first run of the season because we are now three quarters of the way through. Got five riders left and uh, Berkeley Patterson sitting at the moment in the top 10. And that is where we are, looking at the beautiful Japanese Alps. A uh, little bit of wind around the ridges at the moment. Hopefully it's not too cold for the athletes up there. They've been up there a long time. Uh, it's a bit tough if you, you know, you're walking up from the valley bottom. In this case, there was a little bit too much wind for the early lift to be open at 5.30 to get the athletes to the top via the lift system. So they've all been bootpacking from the bottom. And as you can see, it's a pretty long venue, you know, 440 vertical meters. And that's, that's just the venue, you know, to the finish line of the judging. So that's not counting all the other parts of getting up to... To where we are, there was a little bit of a bus, a little bit of a snowmobile, but quite a lot of hiking. So hiking, getting sweaty, standing around in the cold at the top, trying to keep your legs warm, warm. trying to keep your legs warm, trying to stay ready, and uh, then just be in the zone and, and on point to, to lay down a fire run like Berkeley just has. Sitting at the bottom waiting for a score. We already have it. I don't know if he has yet, but Marcus Eder is still sitting in the hot seat for now, giving Berkeley a what up and a high five. Some heavy hitters still to come. Aima Navarro, the wildcard Kai Peterson, Christopher Todel, Greg Murray, the Kiwi, the second part of the, s the siblings, Tom Pfeiffer, and finishing up with Griffin Moller still to come. That's right. Vadik Gorik and Leo Slimit not competing today, uh, but both hoping to be back with us at the FWT stop in Canada. Uh, that is at Kicking Horse, which is in Golden, British Columbia. So we've got another couple of uh, injuries as well, unfortunately, at the moment. Just to tell you a little bit more about that. Out for the season, we have... 30 seconds we have, actually, a mind of our dropping, but just quickly. Uh, out for the season, we have Hank Billis, unfortunately, Sam Lee, Ivan uh, Malakov, and also Konstantin Otner. So huge shout-outs to all of them. Big love. Get well soon to all of you. We can't wait to have you back on the tour because you're super sick skiers, positive, professional personalities that we love having around. So let's uh, look at Emma Navarro for now while we send love to all the guys that can't be here for the whole tour stops. And then we'll let you know about the, the one tour stop injuries apart from the two we just told you in a second. Aymar Lavaro looking like he's having a little bit of a GoPro issue right now. Hopefully it doesn't break his concentration too much. We saw Liam Pfeiffer before just, uh, I'm not dealing with this and leaving. I know on, on, on course. course, the Spaniard from the Pyrenees, Mr. Aymar Navarro. Always good for some spectacular lines, very creative. On first sight, I'm pretty sure he was like, what should I do on this face? He's not the one with the biggest tricks in the bag, but definitely some amazing solid skiing. Biggest and if you, if you want some proof, just go online and type in the South Lines. Have a look at this double. Yeah, Ava. <laughs> Holy crap. I didn't even know if he knew he was going to land that while he was in the air. He put the landing gear down. Must have his transceiver on full send mode. <laughs>
<laughs> You're right. I was like, oh no, he's going to overshoot that first section. But no, perfect timing. Stomp the hell out of that flat pillow. I'm out of our pure free rider. Like you said, Southline's really impressive uh, project in South America where he super sends and taking the same approach here in Japan today. Here going into the NAR, no surprise that he chooses the rider's left side where it gets really steep. And not so far off his the ter terrain he's used to ride from the Pyrenees. Nice. Getting a little bit backseat through that section, just like everyone else has pretty much that's gone through that zone. Must be something going on with the snow, but keeping it together, skiing strong. Solid run from Ima. Really creative double up top. Legs of steel from that guy. Yeah, let's see that again. Looking forward to it. So it bounces off a pillow. It's pretty much a triple. Boom! Look at him compress into that. And core strength to stay on his feet through all three of those impacts. You Spanish little nugget. You are made of steel, top to bottom, legs and core. Judging criteria coming up. That was a double as well. So he's done a big double and a triple. Man, his legs must be shattered. Or maybe not. Maybe he's incredibly strong. It looks like it. Line well, choice, super high. Physically super fit, this guy. Riding all year long, South America, Northern Hemisphere. Snow is his element. Oh, yeah. That's what you can do if you are not doing any tricks. You go out and find the biggest double and stomp it clean. Super impressive. And next up, we have the defending World Tour champion. We have Christopher Turdell standing in the start gate right now. Another representative of the Scandinavian crew. Already had Carl Regner, Eriksson, and uh, we have had Reina Bakarid already coming through. I would say Scandinavian instead of Swedish because we also have Hedvig Vessel riding for peak performance. Like we see that banner sitting behind Marcus Eder in the hot seat. How many riders do we have left to go? After Christoph Durdell, we have Craig Murray, Tom Pfeiffer, Griffin Moller, and then a couple of guys on the start list who are not starting. So will we see Marcus Eder taking a victory for the first time since Italy five or six years ago? <laughs> I think it was 2013 in Courmayeur. What an event. Also finishing his run with a backflip or with a... No, it was even a 180. Yeah. I'm on Navarro. Yeah, that was sick. <laughs> so 73 for I'm on Navarro, sitting in sixth at the moment. And uh, I think you'll be happy with that for that run. Uh, there was a lot of chat before this competition about how you had to be doing tricks to be doing well. And I wasn't sure if that was true. And uh, I'm glad to see I'm proving that right. Here we have the reigning world champion. And it was predictable because the solid skiing he showed from the get go when he's showed up at the Ferrari World Tour was so impressive. Christopher Tudel out of Sweden. Yeah, I'm going to give a bit of a rant about the competitions he's won in Sweden before he started competing on the qualifiers. Once we stopped watching him, he massive backflips and stomping them. Super clean. As usual, he makes everything look so easy with Mach 3. Yeah. <laughs> Skiing, everything is so smooth. Probably his legs just don't move at all. That's why it looks all so easy. Yeah, it looks like he puts in grabs because he's bored. You know, he's just hanging out in the air waiting for something to happen. Oh, I might as well grab my skis. You know, I'm not doing anything else. I'm just, just hanging out up here. <laughs> yeah. Nice shift these two. It's looking so smooth, it's like you're saying. Having fun, enjoying himself in this playful venue. Also heading into the steeper section. No surprise. Please don't hit the tree. Ah, he's done his homework. There you go. That's exactly what I was talking about. He knows exactly what angle he was going for. There's three or four lines off that, and it's so easy to follow tracks. But he said, no, I know where I'm going. I'm going to ski further right, and there'll be a fresh landing there. He's a smart guy. He's already down. It's past the judging finish line, heading towards the finished corral. Super, super smooth line. It's just so hard to not give him a good score. <laughs> yes, you're right. And it is on a consistent basis that's what he does waking up just skiing strong every day all the time and of course growing up in uh, the northern north northern part of uh, Europe the snow is not always the best you learn how to stay on your feet still maintaining to try tricks whatever the conditions 
that's how you become a good skier. Go out at there and ski in all conditions. You will eventually, maybe, become the turtle. The turtle, the man. The consistent Scandinavian, but which one are we talking about? We've got uh, Christopher Turdell, we've got Rainer Bakarid, we've got Karl Regner Eriksson, we've got uh, Hedwig Vissel, four consistent Scandinavians. There's somewhat of a theme going on there, but before we see any of Oh, the other Scandinavian ski, although we've seen the three guys from the skiing men's category. We have a different skier, skier, skier's good description actually. We have Kai Peterson coming up. Do you know who it is? You should. A Kai Peterson, who is he? Didn't he just uh, get like the Powder Award skier of the year? Yep, and he has also competed in one FWT event before, back in 2012 in Revelstoke, and he won that. So he has a 100% success rate right now. And, uh, World Tour competitions to see if he can keep it up today as the score comes in for Christopher Tudal, 75.67. Didn't we have another 75 just before? Because 75 was uh, Mikael Bimbo's and we had someone else 75 points something, so it's getting real crowded in that 75. It is, it is. I think 75, wasn't it? Drew? Sorry, to, to not know all the scores by heart, but definitely in there. Not one of the top, top scores. Not sure what was the problem. With that, everything was clean, but the judges know better. Here we are with preparing ourselves for the next rider to come, and it's a wild card. That's right. A famous one. Yeah, got some, some big name wild cards in this competition, partially a result of uh, injuries to the, the qualified riders. Happy to have them here. Uh, we've got high fives going around. Like I was saying, great to see the camaraderie. Christopher Turdell. Get a reminder to go stand in front of the sponsor wall while we, uh, we wait for his score. We already have a score. I wonder if he does as well, but you got to go stand there for a little while. Tell everyone about how great Hakuba Valley is. Where you go and uh, hang out with the rest of the riders, maybe enjoy beverage later. Yeah, maybe we can use the time and talk a little bit about our next rider. A very short notice wild card from Canada, Kai Peterson. Even no stranger to the Fairyard World Tour. He appeared once 2012, if I'm not mistaken, on the Big Daddy in uh, Revelstoke. And he is back for a Japanese stop of legends. What snow conditions. He loves Japanese snow. Hasn't been here for many, many years. Not sure if mm. this is Kai it's Peterson. It's a pretty New Zealander looking uh, Kai <laughs> yeah. Peterson and the start gate there. It actually looks like Craig Murray. So uh, whether Kai, Kai is late or hopefully skiing today is the question. But uh, the shot we just saw of the start gate we do have Craig Murray in the start gate, uh, and it appears that Craig will be starting before Kai. Hopefully Kai will just be starting later on, but uh, big up uh, to Kai. Hopefully see him soon, and big up to Craig. Uh, this guy is just absolutely on fire, taking home uh, second at the Verbier Extreme last year, I believe. Oh, yeah. yeah. Man, you know him better, but uh, I know him for two years now, and he just keeps impressing me all the time. And uh, I'm not short of uh, just saying he could be a next Kai Kai yeah. Peterson. Kiwi like, guy. No joke, this guy. He has all the tricks in the bag and goes huge yeah. with a 720. Cork 7 tail off the top hit is oh, the ski yeah. version of Travis Rice. This is unbelievable stuff from the young New Zealander. The youngest ever on the right. World Tour last year. He is in his second season. I'm going to call him a super rookie still because he is just riding so hard, so strong, so confident of everything. Where is he going now? Keeps just the momentum up. Looks like he's cruising when he's not sending. This in between heads, he just looks so relaxed. Going straight into that steeper zone. Hopefully, in my eyes, that he'll get over to the same ear that uh, Jan Rossis found, because that was super sick. And just pointing it through there, so quick and smooth. Nice, putting in a grab. Famous for grabbing every single hit that he does. Craig Murray. Rad run. Absolutely rad run. Of course, uh, the big meat of his score will come from the top section. I would say a little bit unfortunate to uh, not follow up to this amazing action we've seen off that first wind lip. Yeah. We've seen other riders kind of uh, stepping up the game further down below too, but have a look. He just missed the grab. Going for it though, but what a stomp. Kind of had a little air in the run out as well, eh? you know, just making a turn off a small air while skiing out from a cork seven off a natural hit. You know, it's all in a day's work for Craig Murray. 
And this is where it gets tough for the judges. You have such a highlight action. And unfortunately, not to, to put put down uh, Greg's run at the bottom, but still we've seen some other uh, hitters that kind of tick the boxes at the bottom section more, just like Marcus Eder. Yeah, put eyes. more features on with more tricks. And uh, uh, so where do you put him now? You have this um, amazing highlight, probably the best and hardest trick we've seen so far in the ski category. As you said, the Travis Rice equivalent of a trick. Same spot, same trick. Cork 7. Yeah, so is it. Yeah, I think that Craig will do all right, but I don't think he'll be in... Oh, maybe the top five, but just not enough features. I think that that bottom right part of the venue looked like it had more features or bigger features. I've seen a lot of really good riders go over there looking for something that I don't think they really found. So uh, kind of traversing over there, I guess, as well, which uh, hurt Rainer Bakarid's score a little bit too. Uh, so creativity has been the name of the game today, and uh, Marcus had really had that, so that's what set him up in first place for now. Another really creative rider that we love seeing uh, movie parts and competition lines from is Kai Peterson, and although he was meant to start before Craig Murray, it looks like he's starting one person after Craig Murray. Craig Murray having just got down throwing a cork seven tail grab, and uh, Kai Peterson in the gate now. We'll see how it compares. You know, I uh, thought it would be the other way around with big shoes to fill, yeah. but uh, Craig Murray... <laughs> Throwing down the gauntlet to Kai Peterson. Oh, yes, that's for sure. Fun fact of the day, Kai means food in New Zealand English, so yeah, it could be kind of confusing with New Zealand risk instead of Kai. <laughs> Here we have the youngster. Definitely a big name for the future, I can tell you that. What a character. So nice to hang out with him. And so impressive the way he skis. Uh -oh. Murray looking stoked. Out of Wanaka, New Zealand. Formerly out of Christchurch. He's a club field skier and a triple cone skier. He skis all over in New Zealand. He uh, skis at Mount Olympus quite a lot. Uh, quite famous in New Zealand is the, the drinking club with a skiing problem. It, it skis just as hard as it parties, and it's always a good time up there. So, uh, shout out to the boys representing from Olympus and the club fields. Craig Murray sitting in fourth right now, 77.33. Just edging out the four or five people that we have between that and 70 points. I think maybe even five or six people. So just just pipping them out with that cork seven tail and the, and the cool little flashy features down the bottom. It's a great start to the season for him. Respect for being on point with the call out for the, for the score. And here we have the skier of the year in the Powder Awards dropping a huge movie with Numinous, I hope I, I pronounce it right, the name Kai Peterson out of Canada. A very familiar name to some historians in this free skiing world, son of Trevor Peterson, exploring the world on skis from an early age on. Yeah, and hitting that uh, first air out of the gate, I think that Victor De La Rue was the only other person we've seen. Coming in, switch to this top hit. He is, switch five, stomping and clean. Haven't seen that for ages on a free World, World Tour event. Super nice, grabbing it out on that next transfer hit and now traversing over to another transfer. Really styly run from Kai so far. Kind of having the same traverse thing that a lot of people have had though trying to get out to that gnarlier bottom section, but let's see what he's got for us down here because it looks pretty rad. Boom, into the pocket, but having a control issue, pulling it back together, staying on his feet. <laughs> Strong. Just both skis in the air, one left, one right, but still on his feet. Now Kai, no, hitting known that for his right. creative lines. Finds takeoffs anywhere. It's bouncing through that section. It's getting pretty cut up now. I've seen a lot of people come through what was was pillows. Now it's kind of, I don't know, what do you call them? Tracked pillows, massive moguls. Getting a little bit caught up in that takeoff as well. There must be something funky with going snow going on in there because Kai Peterson is one of the smoothest riders around. Still getting a little bit bucked. I think the snow might be a little bit harder on those pillows underneath, but staying on his feet. Backing up the switch five up the top with some strong, solid and smooth riding down the bottom. No surprise to see some real innovation. I remember Fabio Studer in the early years of his competition, he showed a switch five, and here we have another one in competition from Kai Peterson. Such a hard trick. Yeah, huge names in the skiing category today. We've got Tanner, we've got Kai, we've got defending champions, we've got 
uh, former champions, you know, and like, look how strong he is to, to stay on his feet like that. That's why he's so up there and why his movies are so amazing because he's just such a cat. He can stay on his feet no matter what, it seems. So after all of this, after all these huge lines from the heavy hitters, big tracks that we've seen today, as we kind of expected, but still blows my mind, we have two riders left, two young North American skiers. One a rookie, one a rookie from last year, and has requalified for the tour. So Tom Pfeiffer, the brother of Liam Pfeiffer, saw Liam make his way down the lookers' right side of the venue earlier already. I wonder if uh, they scoped together and maybe they will, the Canadian twins, choose the same line. Do you think there's intel coming from the bottom to the top to tell them how that line was? Like there is no reception in the valley here, so that either they have radios or it's going to be a hard time to communicate. But definitely it is something. Here we have uh, the trio, the roadshow, being happy campers because <laughs> one of them is on top of the podium in the hot seat right now. Mark Cedar just making sure he gets his skis nice and... Nice and close in to himself in the hop seat. The hop seat, the hot seat. <laughs> Can either of them knock him off? Can either of them knock uh, Tanner or... No, I don't think it's possible for Marcus to get knocked off the podium now. Okay, giving a little what up. Got his, got his cap on under his helmet. Not planning to stick around to show his skis to the, the wall, getting a high five from Travis. We made it to the finish line, to <laughs> the trees and the bushes section, and now hugging with the current leader of the pack, Marcus Eder. Two heavy hitters next to each other. I'm interested to see how the goal, score will be for Sky. Yes, Sky, the Kai, oh. actually. Judges still discussing. I'm sure they're going to see some replays. Here we have his line. 11th place. 11th place with 67.33. Surely do with that control issue. But that's the thing. I mean, he was on 67. Craig was on 77. And between those two, there's, you know, five, six, seven good riders. So there's that, that little difference between control issues, how many features, whether you did a traverse, keeping that fluidity up. There's there's really little things that can make such a big difference to your score, and that's part of the, the difficulty of choosing a line. Tom Pfeiffer on course. The rookie out of Canada. His sibling twin brother already had its run down the venue. We wonder if they have any communication between them, probably via radio to guide the other brother down. And he did a good job with that because Sick a huge three. 360 of that main lip and going into another transfer air right after. Nice. The way to go, the way to start. Tom Pfeiffer having a cracking run so far. I think it's been quite different to his brother Liam's. I think Liam went quite a lot further look is right. So Tom being creative, I'm not sure if anyone hit that second transfer that he just did before. I haven't seen anyone do that yet today. So really cool and creative from the rookie. Already in the bottom section of the venue, going again, as we've seen many tracks before him, into the steep section to the skiers left. If there has been intel, and I gave that intel, I would say go further, look his left to where Jan assisted a sec here, because everything look his right is kind of cut up and bucking people. But as it is, if you have your line nailed in your mind, yeah, nice sometimes shifty. it's better to stick with it. Looked a bit tough to shut it down, coming out hot out of that little shoot, so well done there. A little bit of control issue coming into that section, though, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Just making me think even more and more that the snow's a little bit funky in there. Kind of think he might hurt his score. A little bit, though, but of course he also gained with the choosing a uh, very difficult terrain, different line. Here, the top section, definitely the big meat of his score will come from this 360. Yeah, that was super nice. That top it here as well. I'm not sure if many people had that. As you said, going straight into another air. Those combos, that's what the judges want to see. Yeah, really styling all of the hits, grabbing or tweaking, you know, a like little shifty or a little <laughs> cross up after this bottom one as he comes down into the finish line. Keeping it fun. Nice run from Tom there. But uh, the interesting thing is that he had that little kind of hiccup at the top of that technical section. And, you know, like we always say, don't scare the judges. You know, if, if you scare the judges, then they'll penalize you. So it looks like, judging from the 
the judging criteria, these these green and yellow bars are all in the positive. They look pretty good and it'll re reflect him getting a good score. Uh, but if it's slightly lower than he might have hoped, then I think that would probably be why. You know, having a, a little fall above exposure is, is much worse in judges' eyes, I think, than having a small fall below exposure. All right, we are coming to the very last rider of the Ski Man category. And currently in number one spot, we have Marcus Eder out of Italy. Second spot, if I believe out of my head, it is Tanner Hall. And third. Too close to call. Woo! Too close to call, <laughs> you're right. That's a lie, there's, there's someone in third. I just can't remember who it is. <laughs> Getting a hug from his brother. 79.67, I don't and need to remember who it is. Tom Pfeiffer is in third. Congratulations to the rookie from Canada. He is looking stoked, getting a high five and a hug from Marcus Eder, potentially joining him on the podium. There's only one more rider to go. Imagine that as a rookie coming onto the podium in a third place behind Tan Hall and Marcus Eder. It doesn't get much better than that in terms of dream starts. Big congratulations to Tom Pfeiffer. Super sick run from him there. Really creative. At the end of a creative guy's skiing field, he found new stuff. So well-deserved third place at the moment. The only person that can knock him off that point is who? Griffin Muller out of USA. He proved that he was the rookie to beat last year. What a season for him. Super solid with his best friend, Barkley Peterson. Rocked the show and impressed us all, going all the way to the Verbier Extreme and now back for another Free World Tour season. That's right. I love his threes as well, the way he kind of like tweaks them out and get, puts a bit of a shifty into them. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a shifty three off his top hit. Instead, a huge backy. Oh, no. Oh. Going down big after a huge send. What? That was ginormous. And laid out. Oh. Looks so confident in the air. I think he must have like clipped a traverse track or a bomb hold or something to go down like that. It looked like he front punched on landing and it didn't seem like he un under rotated. So unlucky from the rookie. Too many hits on that top pair and, and starting last, he got the better of him. So was that the last one? Still enjoying the power on the way down though, why not? Yes. <laughs> what a shame. If I remember right, he was uh, using the summer months to At go down to well. your home country and That's right. uh, shred That's some power and some to. share some lines with uh, fellow Sam Lee. Unfortunately, not with us yeah, this man. season. Due to a broken leg in Verbier a couple of weeks ago, but Griffin Muller. <laughs> Went down to New Zealand, skied at Mount Olympus with Craig Murray and the boys. Uh, similar kind of styles, you know, like look relaxed, but send it on the features. And coming through here, the, the technical area at the bottom, I've seen a lot of people come through and get hung up on. And unfortunately, mm. Griffin does as well. Another one, but the damage has already been done with a big slam after his huge big, backflip. huge backflip. Yeah. And maybe, I'm sure Griffin doesn't mind if we take the time, the, the time he gets to the finish line to do a little shout out to the boys that cannot be with us this season. They have been qualified, but cannot be here because of medical issues, just like Sam Lee. Oh man, what an injury, just a couple of days or weeks ago. Yeah, he was on fire as well. So Griffin coming to the finish line, fluided and controlled down as a result of those two crashes. Uh, I think you'll totally understand that score. He'll be disappointed, of course, but he'll have three more opportunities at least to get another score in Canada and Andorra and in Austria. So looking forward to your next run, Griffin. You're a super stylish skier, really fun to watch and uh, fun to trade with as well. Shout out to the boys that we've been riding with in New Zealand, eating the scrog and skiing the lines. Griffin Moller, 19th place today, 7.67. So that wraps it up. That wraps it up for the Ski Guys category today. We have a rookie on the podium. That's, I don't know, not a surprise, but we couldn't have predicted it as much as we could have predicted Marcus Eder and Tanner Hall. Big names. Big names, and they proved to be the big names because two of them are on the very top of the podium. We're going to see the overall score of today in a minute and of course it is reflecting the overall ranking of the free world tour at the same time being the first stop of the 2019 season here in kakuba valley japan that's right so griffin Muller making his way into the finish line now uh you're gonna see the results for the entire field in a second and shout out to Leo Slumet and Vadek Gorek for not being able to make it today due to injury. Marcus Ida, number one, first victory since his home 
the country Cormier win in 2013, I believe it was. Tanner Hall, second, first ever competition on the Broward World Tour, taking home second place. Well done. Tom Pfeiffer, also first ever competition, but coming as a full rookie, third place behind two big names. Well done. And the local, Yusuzaki, fourth place. How good is that? Oh, yeah, what a redemption. Last year, he had a big bubble at the uh, restaged event in Canada mm -hmm. and uh, followed yeah, in last. fifth place, your buddy, and I would say the future of our sport, Greg no, Murray out of New Zealand. Game. Followed by one no. big veteran, another one no. big name, Christopher Tudel and Randy Barcred in six and seven. Score, <laughs> yeah, that's right. We've got uh, Mark Cedar and Tanner Hall as big, uh, you know, video names. Then we've got Randy Barcred, Christopher Tudel, and Drew Tabke as uh, former free out World Tour winners, including the current World Tour champion Yusuzaki and Tom Pfeiffer first ever competition on the Freehard World Tour taking a third and fourth. Ayman Navarro and Jan Ralsis, other seasoned veterans taking a, a top ten place at the first competition of the season. They'll be stoked. Ski men have a second page, a lot of heavy hitters, not having the best day of their season. Mikael Bimbos with a solid 70, super fluid run. Kai Peterson, the wild card, well known to this kind of terrain. Didn't put all his run down as planned with a 67-3-3. Barkley Peterson, Liam Pfeiffer, Carl Rainer, Rainey Eriksson um, following up. Andrew Pollard out of USA, the rookie Jan Duma Baudron. Unfortunately, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, they all had some big, big issues in their runs, just like Taiske. Yeah, a lot Japan, of crashes today. Griffin and Fabio as well. A lot of crashes and control issues today. I think it must have been something fucking going off the snow. So big ups to the guys in the top 10 that managed to put everything perfectly to their feet. Most of the people in the, the second 10, uh, didn't manage to do everything exactly how they wanted. Some kind of control issue involved in almost all the runs. Mikhail Bimbo's first out of the gate today. Big ups to him. Did a good job of opening up the lines. And I forgot to give him a shout out about his Winter Activity YouTube channel that just hit 150,000 followers this week. So, uh, looking forward to the next runs from these guys. Uh, Berkeley Patterson. Uh, big ups to him. I'm going to say his name right. I'll let you go the first time you said it wrong. But you know, uh, yeah. the second time I, I thought I'd correct you. So <laughs> Sorry. That's all good. And uh, yeah, looking forward to these guys having another run, another day, and uh, showing what they've got. Because they, they all have great potential. And I'm looking forward to seeing that realized in the future. Shout outs to the people that can't be with here today, with us here today for injury, uh, as we are saying before. Uh, Ivan Malakov, who podium the first two stops last year, out to injury. These two guys, Vadik Gorik and Leo Slamet, also out due to injury, but only for this stop. Rachel Croft, also missing this stop. And uh, one other, I believe. Do we have someone else not here? Yeah, Thomas Con Feuerstein. Thomas Feuerstein. Yeah. Konsti Otner, we already mentioned him at the beginning, unfortunately, yeah. with a big uh, shoulder injury out for the season. Mm. And uh, Sam Lee, probably watching out of the hospital bed. Get well soon. You'll be, be back with us. Yeah. And Promise. big ups to Hank as well. We miss you, man. We love you. We want to have you back on the tour one day. So we look forward to that. Uh, big ups to the New Zealand crew. And uh, well done, boys. Really amazing show today from the, the guys skiing category. Next up, we have Snowboard Woman. Snowboard Woman, a little recap of what we've seen last year on the same stage as we've explained before. It was restated in... Uh, Kicking Horse Mountain Resort. Ma the ones to look out for for this season, definitely the current Freehard World Tour champion, Manuela Mandel out of Vienna, now resident in Innsbruck from Austria. What a solid season for her. Marion Herti on her heels, very creative rider, freestyle background, now living and residing in Chamonix, the mecca of freeriding in Europe. Yep, very different styles between those two. It's uh, cool to see them compete against each other because Manu's your classic kind of big mountain shredder. Bakana Hama, also a different style coming from a border cross background and also still competing in border cross. She competed here uh, when she won the four star two years ago and then competed on the whole world tour last year. So the local rider out of uh, Hakuba, Japan, sponsored by Nagano Snow Shuttle that's taken us from the airport to our hotels here. Uh, she is also one to look out for today with podiums and I think a win on the World Tour already. She had, exactly, coming in with a win last year with her wild card. And uh, kicking things off here will be the French, now residing in Chamonix, Marion Herti, 
second in the start gate, Nicole Kelly, one of the rookies. Anna Olova, the Russian, already very experienced freeride world tour and freeride world qualifier rider, Anna Olova in third. That's followed right. by Wakana Hama, the local rider. Uh, good success here before, so hoping to have another one for her. We had a uh, Jan, uh, sorry, uh, Yu Susaki uh, coming in third on, no, sorry, on fourth on the, the guy skiing, so it'd be great to get another good result from a local rider in the Japanese crew. Uh, Erika Vikander, whose name I said wrong the entire last season, so apologies for that. Good to have you back. Looking forward to your shredding again. As you're saying, the defending World Tour champion, Manu Mandel. Looking forward to her on this venue today. I think it could suit her quite well. And Maria Kuzma back on the World Tour after seven year hiatus I think she's been on the world tour before but it was uh, oh, like Is 2011 I think oh, yo, yo, yeah. that's some time ago 2010 2011 so a long time between stops on the world tour for Maria Kuzma looking forward to her having her back but first up on course in a second it is Marianne Erti the defending champion from 2017 looking to take her title back off Manu Mandel and she is just dropping in right now on the lookers left of the course, going right out to the power, making sure she gets some good turns to start her season off. Oh, yeah. First turns are always the most important ones to get you into the mood, into the zone. She chooses wisely, going for a 360. Not slicking it clean, unfortunately. Showing her freestyle background right from the get-go. Coming into another hit. Quite a big one, actually. She's going to send that off the nose. Gets a little grab in, a little uh, indie grab, I believe. Saw so, uh, tricks off the first hits from both the snowboard woman and the snowboard man. You know, Blake Ham with his backflip on the first round, Marion RT with the 360. Neither of them quite stomped, but just such a good sign for the categories that they're just starting things off with tricks. No hesitation. And power slashes, look at that. Yes, enjoying the snow, knowing where to place the turn. And there's still plenty of space left. It's a huge terrain, a lot of options. Of course, a little cut up by ski and snowboard man categories. But as you can see, fresh landings to be had. Putting another indie grab there, cruising on past the drone rider. If you're wondering who that guy in the yellow jacket was before, he's flying the drone that's filming. And uh, Mariner T grabbing it out again, enjoying the snow at the bottom, getting a little bit cut up at the bottom of that funneled chute, and I think she's passing the judging criteria line right about now. But uh, awesome to see, starting off the women's snowboarding category season with the 360, not quite putting it down how I think she would have liked to, but uh, big ups. Freestyle is the future of all the categories. Here we have her attempt, unfortunately, a little bit off on the, on the landing. Back seat had to but check that landing, definitely not favorable for her score, and she knows, but you better try. Yeah, it's it's cool to see freestyle straight out of the gate. I remember when uh, there was a 360 on the VB Extreme from the women's category, and it was a big deal, and now it's the first hit of the season. Control a little bit down there because of that crash on the, or butt check on the 360 landing, but all the other... The line fluidity, air and style and technique in the yellow to green line. So the judges like the, the rest of her run, that she was smooth and flowy and going for grabs off pretty much every hit. So uh, 50, 55, 60, I'd say, is kind of where the judges really start off with a, a placement score where they think they'll see people both above and below her in the rankings overall. Uh, you know, not a bad run from Mario T to start off the season. Absolutely. And as we explained at the very beginning in the pre-show, that uh, you should not compare between categories or between events, the, f the score numbers. It's all about rankings in the end. The numbers only help the judges to make up the right ranking. That's right, if they give someone a 50 that's first out of the gate, it's saying we expect half of the field to do better than that and the other half to do worse. Uh, you know, they're not saying that half the field are gonna crash or that half the field are gonna send it. It's just, you know, giving them a general kind of vibe. 68 today, it's the vibe, it's just the vibe, you know. And uh, Marion RT, 68 on the first uh, competition of the season for someone whose first competition ever it is, is a rookie. Nicole Kelly, coming out of Canada. She is a 30-year-old rookie. It's never too late to be a rookie. First year on the tour here after qualifying through the North American Qualifying Series last year. Looking forward to getting out of that wind. It's up at the start gate on the top ridge. Getting sight, getting in the zone. The, the mental state that you're in in the start gate 
compared to the one you're in when you get to the finish corral about two or three minutes later is a crazy change. And the reason they're getting in the zone is so that they can put down their exactly what they want to do through their run, which is uh, obviously in, in front of the world, in front of you audiences at home. So I hope you're cheering her on. Nicole going lookers right out of the start gate, right as left. We haven't seen that that much, although a couple of the first riders did in the guys in the wood category. Gigi Roof, for example, who went out that side and uh, took home a second. You know, we've got Nicole Kelly following him. Getting off that that side of that air that he also hit, I think Gigi Roof. I'm wondering how much of uh, his line she could see from the top, but always gets good to get a couple of pointers from seeing other riders. Unfortunately, it means it's tracks and bomb holes that you're following. Keeping the momentum up, very fluid, fluid so far. Finding the right stashes of snow to slash some pow. There's still plenty of it available. And across the whole resort, if you're thinking about coming down to Hakuba, Japan, there's a little bit of power for you to have. And Nicole enjoying it right now, stomping really head heavy on that air. It's pretty impressive, strong legs from the the Canadian rookie. Very solid rider. She knows already a thing or two how to impress the judges. Yeah, stomping again, really solid legs. Washing out a little bit after that air, but uh, I don't know, it seems pretty solid so far. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Manu Mandel just charging and not taking no for an answer, even if you ride into a tree or 360 out of it. I asked Hazel Birnbaum to sum up her feeling about the venue, and she said solid trees. So, uh, Nicole Kelly just testing it out. I think she'll probably attest to it being correct, but uh, putting down a solid run nonetheless. Not solid enough for her. It didn't buck her off. Definitely the top part of the venue until this hit. Definitely the Boom. meat of her score. As we have Aaron Style in the green. Fluidity a little bit in the, in the, in the reds. But I overall, I would say a very solid run. Solid run, but not uh, as solid as Marion Etty, I'd say. Uh, Marion, although she also had a control issue and a little bit of a butt check, she was a little bit faster, a little bit more fluid. I think you might have seen in the judging criteria that Nicole's scores were down there. But solid landings, really stomping that, but maybe a little bit faster between their features would put her in podium contention more often or this year because it's a bit of a step up to the girls on the Freeride World Tour. These snowboard ladies have been sending it. And uh, wow, the level is high these days. Here Next you up. have images of potential terrain for you to ride. Make yourself a tourist if you are a shredder of a local resort. Here you can be a tourist again with uh, foreign signs, foreign language, and foreign pow, foreign pow. <laughs> and amazing foreign food. The Japanese food in Japan is better than the Japanese food in other countries, I've got to say. The authentic freshness here, it's... It's pretty good. Come on down. Check out Hakuba. Look at those mountains. You want to ride them? Yeah, you do. Next one up in the start gate, the rider from Russia, Anna Orlova. No stranger to the competition scene. She has paid her dues on the qualifying series for years. Some of the years really, really close to qualify. But then finally she's on and she is a force to be reckoned every stop. That's right. She was here competing at the Four Star a couple of years ago when it was a fight between her and Manu Mandel to get onto the Freeride World Tour. And I'm really glad to see that they're both on it now because they totally deserve to be here. The ripping Russian rider uh, showed me around her home resort of Sheregesh, or in her home resort, but uh, a good resort that she likes to ride at. And sending airs like this, just at, like she did at that place, she does it at this place too. They're both powerful resorts with uh, nice airs to hit and transfers like that one. Really nice transfer from Anna there. Making great use of the terrain. That's what the judges love to see. Very confident riding. Yeah, and I'd say the difference between this one and Nicole's is that it's just been a bit faster. You know, like Nicole was stomping all those runs really solidly. Like every hit, she, boom, I take that, I'm strong. And then Anna's doing that as well, but just a little bit more confidently, just a little bit more smoothly. That's exactly what that fluidity uh, category is about and so I think that the points she, she wins in the fluidity category will probably put her above Nicole even though you're wondering hey they both stomped big ears you know what's what's the difference I'd say that's what it is going to the steeper zone as well the more gnarly uh, technical zone that a lot of the guys gears came unstuck in but Anna just flashing her way through it so far 
Here we are in a very technical zone, as you said, where we have seen a lot of skiers and snowboarders going down already. And she's cruising down that technical zone. Stomp. Dropping another drop. So if she gets that one down, I'm pretty sure we're going to see a very solid score. That Hard was a beat. really nice run. Really, really nice run from the Russian ripper Anna Orlova. Uh, really stoked to see her here. Sad to not see her country compatriot Ivan Malikov also here. He's also a great personality and a really stomping, ripping rider. But uh, if we can only have one Russian here today, at least I've put down an amazing run. Big ups to you and uh, big props to Ivan as well. Looking forward to having you back when your knee is better. Yeah, just looking so confident on those ears, her hands, like barely moving when she lands, you know. Yep, I'll put them down, please. Lines go really high, getting through that steep section. Well done. And all the other categories as well. She knows how to tick all those boxes to impress the judges, and I'm not surprised if we have a new leader. Yeah, I would be surprised if we don't have a new leader. 78.33, there you go. Really, really good score for Anna. That's going to take some beating for the rest of the field today. We've got... Four more riders, including the defending World Tour champion, and you can see from that smile on her face that she's happy. She knows she's done a good job here today. After all that preparation the last few days, well done. Big up, Santa. Take a seat in that hot seat. <laughs> yeah. Make yourself comfortable. Oh, yeah. Put so some fun. sunscreen on. Oh, it could nice. take a while. Yeah. Well, who knows? We've got Wakana Hama coming up now. She is the winner of the uh, previous competition that we've had in Japan. That's how she wildcarded herself onto the tour last year. So, yeah, a challenger. Uh, I think that um, Anna was also at that competition, that four-star, a couple of years ago here. So Wakana on course now. As you said in the presentation, she has a racing a background in border cross. Very solid on her edges. But she surprised us on the very first event with a Switch 180. Yeah, that's right. Or a Cap 180, oh. but not this time. She got hooked up, must have got hooked up on one of those branches just before the takeoff. Yeah, unfortunately, control issues at the start of the run will hurt your score. And she is out of her rhythm. Ah, uh, what a bummer. In her home country. The first ever free ride world tour event going down in great conditions and unfortunately already at the top of her run, not delivering. Sorry to see that Wakana, but you're still a fun person to watch, fun person to ride with, fun personality. Yeah, Wakana filling out her um, her rider bio, you know, I thought they were being a bit secretive. The, the Japanese rider bios didn't really give us as much information as some of the other guys, and it's fine, because we know most of them, we can talk about them, but uh, I was wondering if she wanted us to, uh, to tell people what her birthday is, because it's uh, at the end of the end of the 70s, and uh, I was like, oh, I wonder if I'll mention that or not, and uh, under fun facts about herself, she wrote in capital letters, old. <laughs> so I thought, yeah, I guess she, she is doesn't such a mind. fun person to be around. She's a great personality. Not her day on the snowboard here today. Um, yeah, slightly crunchy snow maybe on the slightly sunnier side of the venue up further lookers left, giving the best of her and breaking the rhythm like you're saying. Making her way down past the end of the judging line just at this point. I think she'll be a bit disappointed, unfortunately. Yeah, a little bit of a a run, what do you call it, a run of shame to the finish line. Mm. She knows all her fellow Japanese friends and fans are watching. She wanted to impress not only the judges, but also the viewers. So, unfortunately, not this year. But if she rides strong, the other couple of events, we will have her back next season. Yeah. Yeah, front punching on that air at the top, unfortunately, that'll hurt her score. Fluted in control, quite far into the red. So I don't think she'll be troubling Marianne Erti or Anna Orlova in the hot seat. Next up, Erika Vikander. Erika Vikander, the Viking. Erika the Viking Vikander. I, I still don't know if I'm saying her name right. I know that I was saying it wrong all of last year, but uh, it's more important that she puts down a good name. 
I mean, lying. <laughs> you got confused. Can we start again? <laughs> yeah. Erica Vikander. We're not live. No worries. No. Oh, okay, cool. It's just a practice <laughs> round. Yeah. Well, Erica dropping in for her non-practice practice run. First on the tour this year for her. Returning after a successful rookie season last year. Going out and dropping that power a little bit further right than where everyone else has skied because it looked like it's getting a bit cut up on the left side. Coming past the safety team now. Lining up that windlet. Slashing some power turns. We haven't seen so many people get into the middle of the central core at the top, and she's been rewarded with some fresh snow for that. If you just tuned in, we explained a lot. The snow conditions, it was a lot of wind over the last couple of days with combined with snowfall, so the top section of the run is a little wind affected in some of the ridges for the takeoffs. But if you're smart, you can find the good power. There's plenty of it left. Unfortunately, just got hooked up on one of those tracks. Yeah, I think those traverse tracks might be setting up a little bit. You can see that they're kind of in the sun. And when people have ridden them and they're warm, they can kind of go a little bit harder than the soft snow around them. So I think she might have got caught up on one of those, unfortunately. Look at that power, though. Where it's not been skied, it is just super nice. And she's making the most of it. I like her dropping to the chute before as well. Connecting the dots nicely. The bottom section definitely way better. Yeah, smooth off that bottom there. I like that. Former slope star rider. Uh, I think she went to the Olympics, or maybe she broke herself just before she was meant to go. Anyway, really good in the in the park and changing to free ride now and showing us a smooth park style in the powder. Can we just pass the judging finishing line? I believe now. I think she'd be a little bit disappointed with going down higher up. Um, like I was saying, the snow is a little bit tricky in some places today, and it's a little bit hard to tell, I think, exactly where it's nice and where it's not. It's nice in most of the places, but that makes it even harder when it's a patch that isn't nice when you're not predicting it. Erika coming out to the finish now as we zoom out and see the big triangle, the venue that we're riding here at Hapo Oni in Hakuba today. Here we see the replay of Erika Vaikanda charging through that field. No hesitation. Here we might see that little. Nope. There was a little bit of a hookup, so don't be surprised if the there is a little deduction on her score, averaging out on a 50-0-0. Third at the moment. So knocking Nicole, Nicole Kelly off that uh, potential podium spot. Got a uh, Manuel Amandel coming up next, and after that Maria Kuzma. So two more riders to go. At the moment, we have Anna Orlova sitting in first. We have Marianne RT in second. And we have uh, Erika Vikander in third. So uh, Russia and then uh, France and then America. It's a, you know, it's a very international competition we have here today. And it's cool to see that we've got people succeeding from all the different countries. And really happy to see a Japanese result in the men's skiing. And unfortunately, not in the women's snowboarding today. But uh, really impressive riding from riders all over the globe. And that's what we're about today, coming together here and Beautiful Hakuba. Look at those mountains in the background. Don't you just want to go and tread them? Because I do. So I hope you don't. So I can have more, please. Mm, yes, yes. <laughs> Here we have uh, the current Freud World Tour champion out of Austria. Born in Vienna. Now residing in Innsbruck. Manuela Mandel in the Stargate. What a season she's coming from. Like she had to re-qualify into 2018. And then what happened then? And then she won, man. She, she won the whole tour. It. She just yeah. took away all the big stops. And if you're not sure what McFly means by requalifying, she was on the world tour in 2017, and she didn't requalify. She didn't get the results she wanted. And then at the same time as doing the world tour stops, I think even after she went in back and did some four stars, won all of them, and requalified herself for the world tour. And that was what we're talking about. The Anna and Mana were fighting for the world tour spots, and now. They've both got them. They both deserve them. I, I'm pretty sure that uh, Anna is going to podium today. You know, she was she's first and there's only two riders left, so she's guaranteed podium spot. This is the classic fight of uh, Manu versus Anna, and I'm looking forward to see what she's got in comparison. Here she is, out of the gate, Manuela Mandel. She is known for going big, very solid. She can ride all kinds of terrain, all kinds of snow. Yeah, it's good she can because it's looking a bit tracked here as she comes into the steeper section of the top area. 
He's already been in Norway, shredding in the dark in northern Norway this, this season in December with the snowboard sponsor Furberg, Hampus Sederholm and the Scandinavian crew. And uh, put on a film tour as well to show the movies that her and her friends have have filmed over the last couple of seasons and, you know, preparing and competing on the world tour. She just keeps herself pretty busy, this world tour champion. Now getting into the middle section of the venue where it gets more powdery. She didn't choose the powder turns at the top yet, but now she gets into the slash turns, which everyone loves. That's why we're here for it. That's why we are in Japan. That's right. Manu lining up a drop. Stomping it clean. She rides a lot with the Kiwis in, in Innsbruck, actually. She's an Austrian living in Austria and uh, riding with almost exclusively Kiwis. So shout out to the fun employed crew that she lives with in the Kiwi house in Inrain. And beautiful powder turns, just like you are saying. You've got to find the right spot to get the right turns if you're the second to last category here today of the 30 or 40 riders been before you and she's still finding the goods and making it look easy. Yeah, <laughs> why did no one else find this, man? This looks like a great place to be riding. Oh, yeah, you just have to be a little smart. Smarter than the others, and then you can enjoy the Japanese POW. There is plenty of space all around. A lot of options still to hit. I wonder how this will compare score-wise, though. I think she's past the judging finishing score line now. But the thing is that uh, Anna Orlova got into the steep technical section on the loopers right at the bottom. Uh, Manu got into the steep technical at the top, but I'm not sure if it was quite as score rewarding as Anna's section at the bottom. So she sent these ears, stomped them, look at that, just looks so casual and throws up some powder spray. You can tell her how confident she is by her arms being down the whole time. She's not waving them around, so she's solid. But these, these green scores, these yellow scores, they're all positive, but do you think they'll challenge the top spot? Uh, don't think so. Definitely a solid score for the beginning of the season for uh, the current Freeride World Tour champion. But uh, to take off or take out the hot spot, to get a spot on the hot spot, definitely she would have... Uh, need to show a little more especially at the top section of the venue yeah good run super solid did everything she tried to do as exactly like she wanted to do it i believe but uh she's sitting second now behind anna because anna went to the steep and more gnarly stuff on the lookers right at the bottom but still second with one rider to go guaranteed podium in the first stop of the season not a bad result at all knocking uh, marion at down into third and maria kuzma our last rider today out of new zealand after being on the world tour in 2011 i believe Coming back for 2019, looking for that podium spot to knock Marion Etty off, and she's on course. Same top section as Mona Mandel so far, getting into the steeper, more technical part. Seems like, as we've talked about it a lot previously, a lot of wind at the top section of the venue, but the snow gets better and better by the meter of descent. The rider gets down. The venue. Right, and so far going a little bit more look is right, further look is right than Manu went, more over to where Gigi went, and uh, I think Nicole Kelly also hit this one, so getting off that, solid, probably scoped her line with her boyfriend Roland Morley Brown, another super sick snowboard out of New Zealand, he's uh, here supporting her after coming second on the FWQ last year and uh, not quite qualifying, so maybe next time for him, this time for her, so far looking good. Looking very good, finding a nice spot to land in there, slaying some power turns in the sun. Maria still knows her thing, qualified, I think, with the best possible score. Yeah, three wins in the qualifiers. She knows what's up. Since she was last on the World Tour, she went to university, studied architecture, moved to New York and did some big deal jobs. Her and her boyfriend, Roland, both working there and now both back on the snowboarding vibe. Loving that slash turn, arm out, surf style. They live in Bali. The surf influence is clear in her snowboarding. You can tell how much she's enjoying it. Look at that. Oh, yes. Surfing that wave, getting pitted. This is just a pleasure to watch. Airing off that one, just making it look so smooth, not trying to do anything that's like... You know, going to buck her style or have a hard time just enjoying the crap out of that. Putting some ears and stomping them clean. Uh, probably the most slash turns I've seen from anyone today. Good to see how much fun she's having just riding <laughs> solid, you know? Oh, yeah, and she's milking it. I just love it when you see someone having so much fun. My fellow Thule crew member, always good to be around with on and off the snow. 
Nice, Maria. Nice run. I think you're past the judges' finishing area now. So well done. Good to have a solid run in the bag. Put it on your feet the whole way down and made it look good for the first run back after seven or eight years. It's, it's amazing stuff. All the lines in the green, line being the, the most rewarded of those ones. I, I kind of like the fluidity and, and technique and control as well, but uh, I think this will be a good score overall. How do you think it's going to go? Do you think it will beat Marianne and get her onto the podium? I think it's a podium for sure, but I'm, I'm actually even calling out one of the top spots. Yeah, you think she'll get in front of one of those two girls? I don't think she'll get in front of Anna, but she could get in front of Manu. So looking at it, I would say second to fourth. I'm going to go real conservative <laughs> out of the seven-person field of uh, snowboard women and say confidently yeah. between second and fourth. Yeah. <laughs> As Anna makes her way down. Uh, they've hiked up that in the last few days as well. They've been hiking to the bottom of the venue to see as much of it as they could when it was cloudy. Beautiful sunny day today. I don't think we've talked enough about how incredibly stoked we are to have a beautiful bluebird powder day on the first day of the competition window to get this event done in Japan. So stoked. Just as eager as Maria to see the score is Anna, uh, Anna because she's in the hot seat. Score for Maria Kuzma is 66.33, and just up on behind. Just behind. Matter right. of points, there's a two-point margin, I think. Yeah, Marion Oti was on 67 or something, I think. So uh, just holding onto a podium spot, but still a successful welcome back for Maria Kuzma, coming in fourth at her first stop after her last competition, I think, in Chamonix years ago, being a crash down a debris field of avalanche slip path. So there we go. And all over the Russian taking a first spot today. Manu Mandel second, Marian Erti third. Really narrow gap, 1.67 points to Mary Kuzma in fourth. Erika Vikander, perfect 50 there, and Nicole Kelly and Wakanahan rounding, rounding out the field. But really impressive uh, uh, performance from the snowboard woman today. Cool to see a trick off the first feature by the first rider, and uh, the rest of the riders backing it up with solid stomps and big lines. What do you think about that? Yeah, what a. What an event in the bag already. Unfortunate for the local shredder, Vakanahama, not performing as uh, she was wishing for. Uh, but Anna Orlova, very deserved win for the Russian. Just freaking out <laughs> right now. Is that a first World Tour win? It's definitely on a first World Tour podium, but wow. She looks like she's melting right now. She's a happy chappy. I'm so happy. Well done, Snowboard Girls. Good performance from you today. Looking forward to the next one. Next up, Ski Woman. Coming at you. Ski Women. We have the ones to look out for. Of course, the current period World Tour champion, Ari Tricomi, Ariana in the full first name. And she is not shy of doing any uh, tricks oh. in the Freewild World Competition, proving That's with right. the 360 last season. Hedvig Vessel, the Norwegian mogul skier, second ever visual inspection was when she got invited to compete at the Verbier Extreme, and she did good there. So she's been given a World Tour wildcard for the whole season this year. And the not a rookie anymore by far, Jackie Paso, bringing a lot of experience maybe maybe into her last season of her free ride world tour career and she wants to go big as usual and take out the free ride world tour champion yeah i this bet she year. does i bet she does so ari jacomi opening things up today defending her world tour champion as the first rider out of the gate elizabeth gerritsen style rider out of sweden jackie paso super sender juliet willman just put anna smoothie to win her spot through the fwq in region one I, Aniana winning Ayana, sorry, winning the three star here in Japan. Uh, Hedvig Vessel, the wild card. Jackie Pollard also qualified on the FWQ through the America. Hazel Birnbaum, God, she sends the double in Verbier a couple of years ago. Still stands out of my mind. Maud Bess, another big sender. Big airs out of Verbier, Switzerland. Also rides with Elizabeth Gerritsen. And Rachel Kropp, I do not believe is competing today. Out with an injury, but hopefully back for the Canadian stop. So really excited to see these girls. Eva Walkner, I don't think is here either. Uh, hopefully she'll be back for Canada on the start list here, but uh, under the will not ski category. Uh, Eric, Eva Walkner and uh, Jackie Paso are putting together an incredible movie. If you have not seen it yet, go and check it out. It's called Evolution of Dreams, and it's got probably the biggest sins and stomps you'll see from chicks in a skiing movie. But first up, in the gate, right now, it's Ariana Shikomi, your FWT 18 champion. First ever girl to spin a 360 in an FWT competition on skis, 
and she's just about to get on course and out of the wind here in Hakuba Valley, the Jim Power stop of the World Tour. And I don't want to call it out, but the venue definitely allows a trick or two, especially if you're called Ari Trikomi. She's been riding a ton with her friends, with the Palmas crew out of Innsbruck, being influenced by their creativity. And I called it out, a 360 to start things off. Oh yeah, just the way she finished and uh, solidified her win on the Freeride World Tour last season. That's how she continues. Coming into this next hit, we've also seen some tricks off it. That was the Blakeham backflip at the very start, stomping an air off that. It's been a really good feature. Haven't seen that many people hitting it, but Ari making the most of it, just looking so smooth and solid down here so far. So happy for her. She's feeling good in her skin as it's directly translated from German. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, that but totally makes sense in English as well. Yeah. <laughs> Getting a little bit bucked on that landing, but holding it together, riding her tails, but in a strong way. It's like, oh, that landing wasn't as expected, but I'm going to stay on my feet. I don't care. That's where you see confidence and uh, trust in your abilities. Yeah. yeah. She's been riding a lot of power this season. She said it was hard to leave Innsbruck in Austria. Uh, the Feeble Run stop is coming up in a couple of months, and that has so much snow right now. So she was, uh, you yeah, know, it's nice to go to Japan, but Austria is good too. And I think she's looking at pretty good score here, even though she's the first one out of the gate. I'm going to call it that she's going to have a good day. And uh, maybe not uh, so sad to come to Japan after all. And that's actually what every rider uh, has in mind, to ski well for them, for themselves. If they know they've done a good run, it can only be a good day, no matter the score. That's true, that is exactly true, man. You're skiing for yourself at the end of the day, and the Aaron style is right up there. Uh, I think we're gonna be looking at a good score for Ari Chikomi here. First out of the gate, and like you see it, inspired by the Project Pommies crew. Nice three off the top, absolutely stomped it, and that bombed out landing. Big ups for that, that is a lot harder than if you're the first person to hit it. A uh, great movie with her and the crew in Norway last year, doing lots of freestyle in the backcountry, and that's obviously paid off that love of, of airs and freestyle tricks of natural hits. She's just having such a good time out here. Big ups to the Italian girl. Look at it, she backed it up at the bottom of the venue, ticking all the boxes. Pretty sure that the, the, rider, uh, the judges will award that with a big score. Next up. In the gate, we got Elizabeth Gerritsen, and she is a super fun rider to watch. She is a super fun personality, and she is on course. She's got a great sense of humor, a great style on skis. I wouldn't be surprised to see a trick out of her as well, as she makes her way down through the slightly cut-up section now in the sun, skiing it good, even though it's probably a little bit heavy, towards this wind loop, and taking that deep as well. Very solid skier from Verbier, Switzerland. So happy to see her back. Solid. Had a little hard time at the very beginning of her Fred World Tour career. Not qualifying, but now she is a force to be reckoned. I think she found her flow. She's always a little hard on herself. She's a perfectionist, you know, but she's putting down a pretty perfect run so far. So oh I think she's yes. going to be happy with it. Yeah, I think she did the same as Manu Manu. She didn't re-qualify during the season, but she just did the qualifiers at the same time and put herself back on the tour. She's very determined and focused while also being relaxed and fun. Stomping that air, too. She's a pretty small person, you know. She's quite young and small, but she just skis with this maturity beyond her years. This looks pretty at ease, you know. Like we are saying, the snow can be a little bit funky. Got a couple of the guys' skiers got caught out, but... So far, the girls just looking really solid, you know, just making their way down through the end of the finish line. I think that's around about or past the, the judging finish line, so I'm not sure if that little stop is going to mean anything for a score or not. So if you just tuned in, we have the venue, the big triangle, which opens up with a lot of features. Just a little recap here. Slow-mos of the last rider, Elizabeth Gerritsen out of Switzerland. And you see a lot of open terrain at the top with some features of transfers and a lot of small natural takeoffs. And yeah, at really the bottom stopped. you have a lot of trees and bushy uh, area until you actually get to the finish corral. So the finish line is not the finish of the judging. It's a little further up. 
So Elizabeth Gerritsen, 75 points, coming in at second for now. You'd think that 75 points is the kind of score that would put you in second. That sounds about right. She's also only the second rider out of the gate. So uh, second is, uh, you know, it's second out of two at the moment. But, you know, two pretty good runs, you know, like. Oh, yes. We said don't don't let the scores confuse you too much. But, you know, if they're over 70, they're, they're pretty good. Jackie Paso on course now. The veteran rider out of... Uh is it Sun Valley? And she's heading to the first big drop, going with a yeah! big backflip. Oh, no. <laughs> Just under-rotated. Oh, Sick, no. Sick, Jackie. She's always been one to push the boundaries. With the size of, of cliffs, speed of lines, now tricks. Just like her, her husband, Raina Bakari, had backflipping that first air, under-rotating a little bit and front-punching back to her feet, but skiing it out. Big ups. Have we seen a backflip from a chick in a with FWT competition? We have seen attempts on it, but uh, I can't remember or uh, picture any stomped backflip of women yet in the Freyard World Tour competitions. We've seen it in qualifying events, but not on the big league. Yes. Really cool to see Jackie always pushing boundaries. Going for Lucas right option now. Finding some nice snow in there. Yeah, long-time competitor on the Freeride World Tour. Sending big ears and sometimes having big crashes and had a couple of bad injuries, but always made a way back from them. It's so strong and determined. And that strong and determined is how she stomped that air as well. That was super sweet. Where is this zone? Why has no one else been there? Yeah, so happy to see uh, Jackie finding a new zone, not being, like, uh, bummed out because, obviously, she is the girl that looking for the biggest cliff of the venue, the gnarly lines, but uh, this obviously venue doesn't offer those big cliffs and uh, exposed sections. It's all about power heaven, and she takes the most of it just under rotating, not getting her head into the neck enough. Ah, yeah, what a shame. Not quite getting the pop of the takeoff that I think she was looking for, but stomping those ones. I forget sometimes that she's a former mogul skier as well. Her and Hedvig Vessel, both former Olympian mogul skiers or professional mogul skiers on the World Cup circuit. And uh, yeah, I'm sure she's done a couple of backflips in that competition circuit too. So cool to see her taking it to the backcountry. Score up for Jacqueline Paso with a 64. Still not too bad considering the crash after her backflip. Next rider up, out of France, Juliette Wilman. And she is residing in France. In Chamonix. Uh, Chamonix, sorry, Chamonix, France. That's the right. place to be if you're a free ride professional. Getting psyched now after pretty amazing story actually. She had seven surgeries in 2016, 2017, and then qualified for the World Tour in 2018. So welcome to the World Tour after coming second and just missing out on a spot in 2016. You had a tough year 2017 and made it a great year in 2018. So best of luck for 2019 and your first hit on the World Tour. Getting a little bit bucked on that takeoff. I don't think that's exactly what she was trying to do, but laying down some race carved turns in this power field, skiing extremely fast. And very confident, very solid skiing. Maybe a little bucked off on that ridge, but she proves that was just a little funky thing. She's heading to her first drop. Probably the fastest skier of the women's ski category so far. Yeah, I think so. She's charging. Picking a line, quite full line down the mountain, try and lay some hits together, but in a way that doesn't make a need to traverse. Getting chairs from the bottom. There's a lot of World Tour athletes at the bottom now, and they're all standing together in the finish line, cheering for the athletes that are still to come. Clipping a tree just like Nicole, the, Nicole Kelly did, but just ignoring it like Nicole Kelly did, staying strong on her feet. Yeah, just a little bit more you would have had it. Coming down into the finish line now. I think she's at about the judges' finish point. You clearly have to start controlling the speed to not get hung up in the tight gullies with the trees. But uh, first run in the world tour, you think she'll be happy with it? I'm pretty sure. Um, every every run kind of uh, where you where you ski solidly is a good run. I'm pretty sure she wanted to add on some more features as uh, she knows how to impress the judges. Uh, she didn't include too many features in her run. Maybe she was too fast for herself, but uh, definitely a very solid run for her first uh, appearance on the Freyard World Tour. Yeah, I think so too. 
There's uh, Ari and uh, Elizabeth Gerritsen sitting in the hot seat there having a chat. Ari sitting in first at the moment. I think she will still be sitting there first after this run. Juliet Wilman going to join them potentially on the podium though with a 68 points. Uh, the judges like to run, like you were saying, really, really fast. And that's a, that's a big thing to be able to do. Uh, probably would have wanted to take an air off that top spot, like you were saying, kind of got hooked up in maybe that tricky snow. But uh, overall, great start to f wub t career for Juliet Wilman. Third place right now. The happy camper, Adi Tricomi, in the hot seat. And she's the girl to beat with a 360 right out of the start. Here we have next rider from Japan, the wild card winner of the three-star qualifier, Ayana. Onizuka. Thank you. And a little cool air out of the top. Nobody else has hit that. Oh, oh no. no. What a start for her run. The worst possible. Just losing a ski on the second turn. She is all. What a shame. In front of her home crowd. Yeah, that sucks. That was a cool little creative top air as well. I think she kind of landed and came straight into a lot of traverse tracks that maybe she couldn't see from the top. No one else has hit that little top air, and you know she took it on, even though she was that late in the in the field and that many traverse tracks under the under the cliff in her landing have kind of been her downfall there. Her her ski is a uh, wee ways above her. Maybe they'll send someone to grab it for her. Um, maybe she'll get it herself. But either way, uh, best wishes and, and tough luck to Ayana after winning the three star last last week. I think she would have been hoping for better. Absolutely, but what? Already a big success for her coming to uh, Hakuwa, Japan, winning the three-star event, and uh, but unfortunately not finishing up her week with the dream result here, vice versa. Skis off on the second turn, unfortunately I no think she, score for her. Doesn't she have to fly to America for the X Games today? Like, I'm pretty sure she's leaving from this competition to go to the airport. Uh, you're right. She is actually a half-pipe rider. Yeah, she's a professional half-pipe skier that needs to leave here by noon. So thank you for making the time between your X Games schedule to come compete on, on the Free Ride World Tour, Ayana. I'm sorry it hasn't gone well for you, but I'd love to see you back sometime because you're obviously a really stylish, smooth skier and you got unlucky clipping a traverse track this time. Best of luck at the X Games as well. I uh, hope you make your flight, <laughs> leaving here at noon or earlier to drive to Tokyo Airport and uh, make your way back or over to America to compete in a completely different type of event. Next rider up, I think this is the first official Freeride World Tour appearance as a full-time, full-season competitor of uh, Hedwig Vessel, and I think we can expect a lot from her in the future. Don't want to jinx her, but uh, the style of riding I've seen from her in the past lets me uh, predict some, some big results. Yeah, she's a strong addition to the Scandinavian crew here. Former professional mogul skier, and uh, she's dropping in in 30 seconds, they tell us, over our producer's intercom, but she's just putting her skis on at the moment, so I think it might be a little bit longer. I want to talk about her a little bit more anyway. I want to say that she is a really talented mogul skier, a really talented big mountain rider, and threw a backflip at the Scandinavian Big Mountain Championships, which is off a cliff as well. It was pretty impressive to watch. I saw it with my own eyes. And uh, she did that one year, crashed, came back another year, did it again, stomped it, won. Uh, that's one of the only fair competitions that she's done, I think, you know, or it was at that time. Did a four-star in, in Norway at the... Um, the Roldal Four Star, it's in her home country, and I think she did reasonably well there. It was her first ever visual inspection, and after those uh, few good results demonstrating she was a bit of a natural talent at big mountain skiing, she got invited to the Verbier Extreme. So after these few competitions, which she'd done pretty good, including freestyle tricks, second ever competition as a visual inspection, which I can't really explain how difficult that is, skied at the Verbier Extreme, one of the most intimidating competition faces in the world ever, and uh, now she's on the World Tour as a full-time participant. So welcome to the sport. Welcome to the World Tour, Hedwig Vessel. Uh, looking forward to seeing what you got. Maybe a backflip at some point in the season. I'd be excited to see that. But, uh, <laughs> yes, we you know, too. No pressure? No pressure. No, no, we're, we're not. Just saying, just saying. Yeah, I'm Jay Essen. <laughs> Hedwig Vessel on course in 10 seconds. We've seen a backflip already today from uh, Jackie Paso. 
Jacob Passo is an honorary member of the Scandinavian crew being married to Rena Bakariad. So maybe they've scoped this together. Maybe they've talked about it. Do you think they'll do the same thing? Maybe she got inspired. Maybe she, it wasn't her plan yet. But when you see someone uh, throwing off 360s and backflips of a potential hit, why not do the same? Strong skiing through that top section too. That cut up snow can be quite heavy once it's had a bit of sun on it. So looking strong so far. And Backflip out of the no gate. No surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Sticking it clean. Super sick. Took but it deep, laid it out. The surprise was the size yeah. and the scent mode she was in. Transceiver in full scent mode today from Hedvig Vessel. Lining up another air. Skiing fast off these features. Getting to one of these cool eyes now. A little bit kind of cut up that snow in there. So hopefully it goes well for her. Seems pretty strong and, and unperturbed so far. Look at that core strength. Just skiing through a takeoff. Unfazed by that. Kind of Craig Murray style. Just kind of looks like she's cruising. Like hits features and sends tricks. And in between that just looks like she's relaxing. But she's actually skiing super fast. Very solid skiing. No many more features at the bottom. But what a line at the top. It's huge backflip. Holy moly. Setting the tone, challenging the judges. I think the battle is on. Yeah. Ari and Hedvig for the season, I'm calling it. Absolutely. That was a crazy top hit from both of them. Uh, not as many features below from Hedvig, I'd say. You know, Ari got in some other cool features as well. She like really played around and made the most of the bottom of the venue. Hedvig, back but, up, up the top. Look at this. Look at this. Boom. Full speed, full scent mode. Stomp. So strong. This is a textbook backflip shown on the highest level of free riding. In the backcountry too. So amazing stuff from Hedvig Vessel, but the thing is that she didn't have that much more to a run. One of the first big backflips I've seen from a girl in a free ride world tour competition. So that's the thing. You know, do you think she'll pip Ari for that backflip without other as many other features in her run as Ari had? Or do you think Ari will with the three sixty and, and the other features hold on to a spot in the hot seat? That is a big question. Um, definitely, she sent the backflip way further than the 360 of Adi, but you're right. It was not as complete as we've seen from Adi, where she ran, uh, skied very playful at the bottom section compared to Hedwig skiing very strong and solid. And fast, actually. Yeah, it was really section. fast, but like there was an ear in the middle. Kind of thought she might take it a little bit more off the nose and take it a bit bigger. And she skied off it really fast with no hesitation, but uh, could have taken it a little bit larger. So that's the kind of thing the judges look at in the comparison of, of people. You know, are you making the most of a feature or not? And uh, you know, I mean, the first and most important thing for me is super sick, amazing runs from these girls. I'm really impressed with the level today. I didn't think that I'd see big threes and big backflips from girls in one competition. Uh, and I'm pretty confident that Hedvig and Ariana will be first and second. And big props to both of them, whatever happens. Got two or three more riders coming up after this as well. So, wow. Already heavy hitting stacked field today from the girls. Third here for Hedvig Vessel today. I'm going to have to take that all back. Uh, so who do we have in second then? Still uh, Elizabeth Gerson? It must be still Liz, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was freaking out about that backflip. I might have got too excited about it. Uh, spot on the podium, definitely well deserved. Uh, Ari staying here in the hot seat for now. His, uh, Hedvig's looking stoked though. There's there's hugs and high fives and smiles. Like it's a good vibe today in sunny Japan. Gosh, you don't know how long we've been waiting for this. Last time we were here, how long was it? Ten days of of no sun just to try and get a competition done, and this time it's happening. So massive win for everyone overall. Next up, who we got? Next one up, we have one of the rookies, Jacqueline Pollard, the sister of uh, Andrew Andrew Pollard, already competing in the ski man category previously. Andrew Jacqueline coming, coming out coming of Alta, stuff. Utah. Super nervous because all of her friends and family is watching prime time at home. What has she got to offer for us today? Getting to the technical section at the top, making her feel a little bit more at home because they compete on skied out venues usually in North America, the, the ski inspection. So first ever visual inspection in a major competition for Jacqueline today. Uh, best of luck to her with it. I know it's a super intimidating thing to do for the first time. So 
get your feet off the ground, land them on the ground, stomp that landing, get your confidence up. Right now already, I bet she's feeling better, you know, that got that first air under the belt, starting to get into the flow, enjoying that powder. The vibe starts getting high as you come down, right? Yes, yeah. I think uh, the butterflies are out of the stomach, out of the tummy, and uh, now she can get into her zone of solid skiing, getting into good snow. As we said, the snow has been wind affected on the top, but getting better as the altitude drops. Finding a way across to the looker's right side of the venue, maybe looking to get into that steeper technical zone as well. Still finding a lot of fresh pow on yeah. that skier's left side of the venue. That's right, after so many riders before as well, it's so cool to see how much good snow there is left. And good snow left all over the over the resort here if you want to come check it out. It's, it looks like a good season shaping up. As Jacqueline comes down towards her last feature, I think she's lining up this bottom cliff in the steep technical section. Got one more air for us. Into the chute. Nice, well held on to in that, that tricky snow zone where we've seen a lot of the guys' skiers come down. So I think she'll be pretty happy to get down first ever World Tour run, first ever visual inspection in a major competition and put one on her feet, gets down, gets the season started off in the right direction. I think she'll be happy with that. Oh yeah, get the butterflies out of her tummy because visual inspection is a huge thing as they mention all the time. It's a, it's a different ball game here at the Freeride World Tour where there is no chance to get your feet hands on it before the event. Everyone has all, one try, one attempt only. And uh, everything you, or all they offer is eyes on before That's right. the event. That's right. So just to explain that a little bit for people who are unsure, the topic that we're talking about, 59.33 uh, for Jacqueline Pollard currently sitting in sixth. Got 30 seconds till Hazel Birnbaum starts. I'm going to try and wrap this up real quick. In America, in the four stars, you can ski through the venue before it starts because they're open areas to the public. In Europe, you cannot. Uh, visual inspection versus ski inspection, difficult task to get used to when you change. Hazel Birnbaum, next rider in the start gate. American rider, but with experience of visual inspection. One of my favorite riders, actually. I love watching Hazel. She just charges so aggressively. Such a strong, powerful, confident, and aggressive skier. Just a great person to watch. And uh, excited to see what she's got for us here today. Yeah, definitely one of the category classic big mountain rider. Strong and fluid. Going into the gnar, usually. Of course, today there is not much of a gnar. You have to find creative lines. Will she offer us and the judges exactly that? It's been a popular air, this one over here. Getting off that in the same direction as Gigi Roof did and cutting straight skiers left towards the lookers right side of the venue where it gets a bit more steep and technical down the bottom. Enjoying the power for now. That You can see the stuff, stuff in the sun starting to get a little bit heavier. It's not getting thrown up in the air as much as the stuff in the shade, you know, the, the slashy turns like that. You know, you can see how soft and nice the snow is, but unfortunately a lot of the features are in the sun, so that's where the riders are having to go. Here again, finding some beautiful snow to slash some turns. Getting pitted, as they will say, in surfing terminology. Not hitting anything big at the bottom so far. It's finding way down in the nice snow. Looking to line something up. into that same steep technical section that we just saw Jacqueline Pollard come through and airing off that so solid. Really bending her legs on landing, she looks like she's pretty untroubled by that. And a cool double down the bottom as well. Had a nice little double in the, the very, very top section and a nice double to finish it off. So a solid run from Hazel Josie Birnbaum. Get the season started in the right way. That's what you want. First score underneath your belt. Kick things off for the season. Another four events to come, you have to know. Trying to get the Freeride World to a champion title, you have to be consistent, ideally in all five events, but there is one throwaway result. So she probably keeps the little more risky maneuvers for later in the season. Look at this oh, venue, what a day. this backdrop, and there it's 
options, options, and options all around us to go off piste. When the sun comes out, the mind explores. This place has got so much potential. Uh, Travis Rice made the most of it in one of his movies recently. I think that that opened up a few people's eyes to the terrain that Japan has to offer. It's often hidden by clouds and heavy snowfalls, but is here, and Hazel Burnbaum just made the most of it with the current fourth place. Maud Bess, last rider of the day after a successful competition. I'm not going to... Uh, I'm going to knock on wood and say this. We haven't had any competition uh, injuries. We haven't had any problems. We haven't had any distractions. We haven't had any uh, really bad wind or, or snow conditions. We haven't had anything really go wrong today. And I really hope that Maud Bess is going to show us a sick run, finish it off in the right way. It's been an incredible competition here in Japan today, finally in the sun. On course, Maud Bess out of Switzerland, the Verbier local. She has proved in the past that she is a solid skier and talking to Fred World Tour competition, fellow competi competitors, everyone says she can go big. Of course, there are not many possibilities here on the venue to have those exposed cliffs where she loves to take off and there are plenty of those in where she lives in Velbier. But Will we see a creative line out of Maud Bess? The first appearance on the Freeride World Tour for her. Finding an air through there in the middle section, skiing fast. Reminds me a little bit of Juliet Willman. I think that they ski together, they're, they're shred buddies, and uh, skiing fast and controlled and looking to line up some features. Uh, seems to be a common theme for these two. Getting into a completely new zone. No track so far. Great combination there. Yeah, finding some good snow. Very steep section, the steepest part of the venue. No hesitation with some slough, sending it big. Wow, super sick. Disregard for those rocks. The best b uh, bottom section for me so <laughs> yeah, far. Why is nobody else skis this? The women category. Where's she so going? So sick. It's, it's endless. That was awesome. How did she scope that? Why did nobody else ski it? That was like, <laughs> where has it been hiding? <laughs> this is smart choice, line of choice. Really you smart. You know you are the last down the mountain. Exactly. So better be creative because yeah. then you have the best run of your life, even with bib number 200. Yeah. Oh, that was really, <laughs> really impressive. Uh, I was hoping I hadn't jinxed her by saying I hope the last run goes well after such a successful competition, but she totally proved me right. Finding a completely new zone and skiing it so fast and powerfully. Just looking so on point there and exactly like you say, McFly, finding a zone that no one else has skied even though your last bib of the whole competition. Rounding things out in such a cool way to see and really high level from the girls today would not want to be a judge. Everything in the green. Maybe the air and style could have been pushed a little further, but mm, it is the, the bottom part, which uh, is the big part of her score in the end. In the top, she was not hesitant, but definitely not throwing it out. Maybe had to get off the cobwebs, and she is g putting a big score down. Second in her first event, Maud Best, 78.67, one step behind Ari Tricomi, and what a heavy-hitting woman's feel today. Incredible. What an event. Oh, this is just such a privilege to be a part of. This is sunny powder day in Japan. We don't get this very often, and I'm so happy to see how everyone just made the most of it. Amazing lines from Blake Ham coming out of the gate with a huge backflip. Very first thing to uh, Maud Best skiing the last run of the day and finding a completely new zone at the very bottom and being super creative and impressive. It's been an incredible show to watch today, and big ups to everyone involved. I never thought I would see a backflip from a girl sent in an FWT competition and not podium. The level is just going through the roof. Unbelievable action. The ladies have thrown down, proved everyone wrong. Playful terrain. They just stepped up the game. And look at Elizabeth running to her good friend, Maud Bess, on her first ever appearance on the Freeride World Tour. Hugging through the finish Woo! line. And they're both on the podium. Are they? Awesome. I wasn't sure if uh, Elizabeth had got knocked off now, but uh, wow, Ari, uh, Ari, Maud, and Elizabeth then. Is that the top three? I think it is. And then it's Hedwig and... Uh, 
I think that Hedvig might have even... Uh, She's fallen off the top three, I yeah. think. Yeah. Maybe even out of the top four. But what a level from the girls skiing today. It's so good to see these hugs. They can't even let her get to the finish line yet. The camera's waiting for her to come and take her skis off and stand in front of the... The board wall at the bottom, but uh, she's too busy getting congratulated by her friends and competitors. <laughs> Someone asked us to explain what uh, what's written on the top of her helmet in, in French, and uh, Elizabeth complied and said, "Yeah, it says uh, no brain, no headache." Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Talk about Liz. She asked me to do a big shout out from her personally. And of course from us as well, nice to job. Sam Lee. I'm pretty sure he's still watching. Yeah, Sam. Following the tour. Huge shout out to you, buddy. Another person not here because of injury is Rachel Croft, not skiing today because of a leg problem. I believe she will hopefully be joining us in America. But sorry, Canada. But uh Ari Shikomi backing up her world tour title win last year with the first the first stop today. How good is that? And then some uh, Swiss forces, Maud Best, the rookie, and Elizabeth Gerritsen, her best friend, both residing or riding in Verbier, finishing the podium. Hedrick Vessel, the Scandinavian, the World Tour wildcard out of Norway, the mogul skier with the backflips, throwing a huge backflip, really impressing us with that, not finding quite enough features down the bottom, though still skiing, really strolling and taking a fourth in her first ever event. Uh, disappointed but happy is probably what I guess she'll be. You know, a fourth in a first ever event is great. Would have been wanting a podium with a trick amplitude like that, but still pretty good. Hazel Birnbaum, top five today. I think not quite of her usual caliber, but a good way to start the season. Juliet Willman getting uh, hung up on the, the first feature of the day and uh, still putting down a solid run to come top six. Jackie Paso at seventh. Jacqueline Pollard eighth. Ayana Onazuka coming ninth, uh, losing a ski unfortunately, and uh, Rachel Croft coming 11th. Ayana flying straight to the uh, uh, States, I believe, for the the X Games later <laughs> yeah. on today. So action What packed a for career! Everyone. Like free ride competition one day, and a couple of days later, you are in an icy half pipe. Incredible stuff from the ladies, snowboard and ski side. If you haven't bet on the other stops yet, hopefully you bet on the stops today, but if you haven't done them for the future ones, you can do that with Peak Performance Fun Bet. Uh, have a look for it on the World Tour website, freeridewildtour.com, and uh, bet on your favorite riders. Maybe you've got a bit more of a feel for it after seeing how they perform today and seeing who you'd like to perform better next time and uh, sign up and win free performance uh, gear that you can get narrated by uh, our Peak Performance rider now. It's uh, Hedrick Vessel telling you all about it. My name is Hedwig Essig, and I want to stand on the top of the podium as a Freeride World Tour champion. With Peak Performance Fun Bet, you can choose whoever you think will win. By doing so, you have the chance of winning prizes from Peak Performance. Follow these instructions to enter the Fun Bet. Now, who would you bet on? Very playful rider. What a show today. What an impressive performance from all of the categories. And what a bluebird power today in Japan. We weren't sure if the weather forecast was right today. I think we were too nervous to believe it was going to be this good. But no one has the weather and the snow been this good. The performance from the athletes, the whole team, the crew. A massive thanks to everyone involved in pulling this thing off. A big, big up for all of the crew sitting behind us making this all happen. And of course, the attitude and the performance of the riders great first stop couldn't ask for more blue skies great pow thank you japan thank you arigato gozaimasu next up what do we got we got kicking horse waiting for us yeah, unfortunately not with me i'm gonna watch from home but you're gonna see some amazing action coming live from you from kicking horse mountain resort canada next up up can't wait
thanks for joining us, guys. It's been a pleasure to have you with us today. I'm glad that you got to witness this special event. It was a real pleasure to be a part of, and big shout out to all the riders for throwing down so hard. Great to have you with me, McFly. Uh, thanks same, for joining same. today. And I uh, will see you in Verbier when you're commentating the next stop. Exactly. La nothing left to say than uh, sayonara and arigato gozaimasu. Arigato.